All right, Max, welcome to Relay Radio. I'm your host, Derek Dreyer. To my right is my co-host, Daniel Hong. Daniel Hong. We will be lighting the torch of knowledge to bring you exhilarating insights, expert tips, and inspiring stories. Immerse yourself in the world of business, entrepreneurship, and life as we pass the baton of knowledge, empower you to sprint towards greatness. Our guest today went from riding the corporate wagon to building one of the most popular candy companies in the world. In his 11 years on YouTube, light went out, his channel has transformed from posting max out videos to epic daily vlogs, nutrition tips, and his journey throughout his life. Founder of Everford Apparel and Sour Strips, Jeep Fanatic, movie quote extraordinaire, the best pound for pound celebrity deadlift in the world. He is... Max Tuning. Uh, I think I think my name was in caps when I saw it on there, so I need you to say Max Tuning. There we go. That's what I was. That's what I was looking for. What's up, everyone? Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. All right. So I'm going to explain the structure of our podcast to you. Uh, you know, being you should do different legs because it's called relay. Well, yeah, yeah we'll get it, to that. Uh, uh, <laughs> cut me off, bro. Yeah. It is actually hey, I like so. It. He knows what he's talking We structured about. the podcast like relay. Uh, we're going to start off with a warm up. The warm up will be a, a little 200 meter sprint, which is a bunch of trivia questions. You're going to answer them as fast as you can in 30 seconds. Okay. And yeah, uh, you, there you, is a leaderboard, so um, if you suck, you will get a lose. I'm going to lose. Yeah. Uh, after that, we'll go into four different legs of the podcast: um, personal, social media, business, and then like advice retrospect, and then we'll cross the finish line. Fuck cool. yeah, dude! You ready? I suck at yeah, endurance. You, you, ask, but... <laughs> you ask questions to your guests all the time, so. We want to see if you're smarter than the fifth grader. I'm not, but we'll, <laughs> we'll get into it. All right. Uh, Qual, give me a 30-second timer when when we start. All right. Let's go. You ready? All right. Born ready, baby. Warm up. Warm up. Warm up. Who is on the $5 bill? Abraham Lincoln. Okay. What month has 28 days? February. What car company is credited for Jeep's front grill? <laughs> So much for Jeep. This is a, this is a Jeep. Backpack. I don't know. Uh, when was the iPhone first released? Oh, fucking no. 2008. <laughs> uh, what's the largest river that flows north? <laughs> you're right, first you're sour right, candy. Right, I don't know. First sour candy ever created. Time. God, I don't know. All right. <laughs> Like we tried to give the many, answers. How many times have you taken a shit during your life? <laughs> like, <laughs> All right. So you got uh, you got the five dollar bill, mm -hmm. and you, that's it. Yeah. Wait. So the February 20, is no. So every month has twenty eight days. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker. No. Uh, so the, I'm car, not. <laughs> the car company that's credited for Jeep's front grill is actually Ford. Well, I mean, that was gonna be my answer because Ford's the yeah the first car company. Yeah. Uh, how many how many slots does the iconic Jeep grill have? Seventeen. I almost thought you had it. It's seven, but it's a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember all these answers actually. Uh, so first iPhone was released in 2004. Fuck. Largest river that flows north is the Nile. <sighs> Denial. Yeah, not just the river <laughs> in Egypt. Yeah. The first sour candy ever created was Lemonheads. See, I wouldn't call that a sour candy. I'd call, call that a tart. Yeah. I call that tart. 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 Damn. See, that's tart, extraordinary. Tart, like we tiger? don't candy. Connoisseur type tart. of language. We don't know that. Tart candy. Cool. All right. So we can begin. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hop into the first leg now, uh, which is a little personal. So we're going to get to know you a little, little deeper level here. Um, so just blanket, blanket question. Who is Max Tuning? Like what, what is your identity? Yeah, I, I say Max Tuning. We say identity because your name is not your identity. Your you're name was given this. to you at birth. You're going to say this in every it's not your podcast. Di yeah, dude. Your name <laughs> is not your identity. So who are you? Deadlift God, cool guy. Yep. Extraordinary lover. That's what, that's what my All identity. Right. Big, are these, big slanging. Are these no. self-proclaimed? <laughs> uh, no, I, I always, I still like identify as a YouTuber. Honestly, I'm like a content creator. So it's like if anyone asks what I do, I, I still put, I make YouTube videos like above even being an like an entrepreneur. I that, that that comes second immediately after, but. Yeah, no, the, all the, uh, all like the business stuff is like a secondary to me, but I, yeah. I like to think of myself as just a very r realistic, rational guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have like crazy expectations for life. I kind of take, uh, you know, roll with the punches and I think I have a very like a uh, real, realist, 
realist outlook on situations. Yeah, I think you're actually one of the one of the very few people who on social media and off social media are pretty much the exact same. I, that, that's why I, t- I mean, I I try. I think that's how it should be. I mean, I think I agree. Yeah, I'm probably like I amp up maybe like 20 percent on camera because I'm not gonna be like, dude, what's up, Derek? Dude, yeah. dude, how was your lunch today, bro? <laughs> like, you know, but like I yeah, I, I yeah. think, you know, for for someone who's done so many like expos and met so many people mm-hmm. like you might have like the one off time where someone caught me in a bad time. But I'd say yeah. for 98 percent of people who have ever met me. I think uh, I want to live up to maybe the expectation of maybe what they perceive me as online. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, for the longest time, it took me a while to get into my groove of being a, like being who I actually am. Whereas like when I first right. started on social, it was like, I have to be, you know, a motivational speaker. Mm-hmm. I have to do all these things. And yeah, I realized that wasn't necessarily what it was. Right. Over there. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll jump into the social media stuff a little bit later, but um, you know, you know, jumping back to who you are. So, um, you went to college, community college, then got a, a business admin degree. Like, tell us a little bit about that background. Yep. So I was a loser. Didn't get into college. Went into went to community college. Uh, that was like the stigma back then. Was if you went mm. to community college, you were like too poor to get to go to regular school, or you were too dumb because you didn't get in. And I mm. at the time it was I actually because I was too dumb. I have I applied to one school, <laughs> which is the school I ended up graduating from uh, when I transferred. Uh, for Virginia Commonwealth University, uh, VCU. Um, and I only applied to it because like my close buddies were going there and it's like downtown from where we lived. But um, yeah, I graduated in 2008 from high school. So you can mm-hmm. give a little idea of my age. Yep, same. College, college took me five years. Took two and a half at the community college, two and a half at my <laughs> school. <laughs> What? I thought you could say community college took you five years. I was like, Damn. No, no. Dude, community college. I, I graduated my oh, one I, class I graduated my with my associates yeah. with like a three point like eight. Nice. Like yeah. crazy. Because it was solid. like easy. It was like yeah. Yeah. community college was easy, yeah. which is like hindsight. I'm like, not only was it cheaper, I didn't stra- I didn't have to study yeah. very much at all. I never pulled like all nighters. Do you feel like you learned anything valuable from those that time? I think I think college for me, um, you know, when I say that I would like have like a business administration management degree, everyone's like, oh, like that makes sense, you know, because yeah. you, you administrate and <laughs> manage path. businesses. But no, I don't really remember. Mm-hmm. I don't remember any of the technical terms that, you know, I mm-hmm. I took whole courses on, you know, Six Sigma learning and, mm-hmm. you know, LIFO, FIFO and, you know, econ terms and stuff. But like besides just those key words, I don't remember right. the like how to implement them because I myself and the industry wasn't at this like point where like you really cared about kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like now if I was went to college with the same mindset. I guess I probably wouldn't go to college, but I would like, I'd probably Sticking be taking a business class. Yeah. I'd be yeah. very interested in like learning about it because it applies to what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but I think college for me was a very integral part of my life because it helped me develop as a person. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, when you go to college, I think the, the things of like, you know, learning to create a schedule and mm-hmm. planning and having responsibilities and you know, that all like helps. Yeah. But for me, it was just not only did I have a great time, um, I, uh, I think I developed a lot as a person and found out kind of like who I wanted mm-hmm. to be and just evolved into who I am. So I, I like, I don't regret going to college at yeah. all. I, I agree. I think that's what, I think college is where you, you learn outside of like your, your classes. Right. Um, I think it is like you said, where you learn to, to be, be a different person or like grow as a person, be an adult, know, learn, yes, learn uh, adult, right. You learn how to pay bills. You, you, you essentially have like own, a, like a you gotta, five you have like a, a budget, five year yeah. training wheels. Like, yeah, that's what it is. But you learn how to be a, an adult, but nobody's teaching you. Correct. You're just you learn how to be an adult, and then, you, and then you become an adult, and then you're like, wait, now, wait, how do I pay taxes? You're yeah, like, just figure it out. You're like, taxes, all right, yeah, you're never yeah, you're learning business from someone who's never had a business. Yeah. yeah. So, so while you're in college with your buddies, um, I know you were really big and in, into jeeps and like doing all that. Still am. Um, right, right, right. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> were you also lifting at that time too? Like how, how did all, how, all that formulate? Yeah. So I didn't start working out until my sophomore year of college. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was, let's see, I graduated as 18. So probably like 20, I was like 20 when I started working out and, uh, I used to actually make fun of my, so even though I went to community college, I went to a, a campus that was downtown, like that was like a mile away from the school that I wanted to. So my buddies that I wanted to go to school with were a grade above me. So it worked out that like even though I went to community college, I still lived like in a townhome mm-hmm. day one. So I so that's I'm paying the picture for you. Um, but so I even as a freshman, I lived in like a townhome with my friends, and um, they would always work out because we had a Gold's Gym in the, at the end of the parking lot at our apartment complex, right? 
and uh, they would always go do fitness stuff. I had one buddy who was just – they're both essentially trying to lose weight. One was like a tall kind of chubby guy and one was a short, you know, chubby guy. And uh, then year two, my – the short chubby guy who's now not chubby anymore, still short, but he he was like, look, we, we re-signed our lease. He's like, Max, look. He's like, I'm kind of fat. You're kind of skinny. Like we had both broken up with our girlfriends at the time. So he's like, he's like, let's get, let's get swole and we'll get all the chicks. And I was like, all right, sounds good. Cause I would make fun of them. Like they would go to the gym and I'd be like eating like sour uh, punch straws and drinking like a non diet Pepsi and playing call of duty. And I'd be like, dude, why are you going to the gym, bro? Like I'm already getting girls without the gym. Why do I care? I'm just eating candy. Um, and then <laughs> got a 25 kill streak right now. Ex- exactly. <laughs> yeah. M- maybe if my eyes closed, dude. <laughs> And uh, no, I got, I got convinced by my buddy Tom to uh, go to the gym and mine was to put on some size. His was to lose some size. And yeah, that like was the pinnacle of changing my mindset. And mm-hmm. it, it's it, so interesting to see how fitness turned into such a big component of my, my entire future. And he like mm-hmm. to this day, I'll, we, we still keep in touch and um, he'll be like, Max, if I, I if someone would have asked me back then to like bet my entire life savings and like me still being alive of like will max take fitness to like be his career <laughs> like i would have i would have bet everything to say no like yeah. he's like i couldn't have been more wrong about like what you were doing with fitness so it was just a, like bodybuilding type fitness uh and then tr- that transitioned into the deadlifting stuff or like, it, it was like, just like that? whatever i mean yeah. he was just like teaching me how to lift and i was like you know, I'd be doing bench press, like going down halfway and he'd be yelling at me to be like, Max, like go down the way, be like, dude, shut, who cares, bro? I'm just like going halfway. I'm not, it's yeah. like I'm competing or anything. Like little did I know, I'd, you know, get into the, the, all that stuff. And then as I developed, like learning how to do all these movements, um, I started learning how to squat, mm-hmm. learning how to deadlift. And then once I became, I, I think with fitness is like you get into this, once people start seeing results, they never want to go back, right? So yeah. once anyone sees the results tor- tor- even the smallest step, towards the goal that they're trying to achieve, it becomes addicting and they never want to stop, right? And you keep wanting to chase this, uh, whatever you're going after. Mm -hmm. And for me, I started uh, trying these different lifts and enjoying them. And then when you start lifting with your buddies, you kind of get into this, essentially a dick measuring contest of, you know, it's like who can lift more weight in the gym. It's like, kind of like, you know, friendly, friendly competition. And uh, my friends, we would deadlift and I just like, could always just happen to deadlift more than them. And mm-hmm. like for whatever reason, like they could beat me at every other lifts and the deadlift, I just excelled at. So then because I'm good at it and I was beating my friends, I was like, I'm going to put even more emphasis on this mm-hmm. and really try to like, you know, level up my deadlift. So the strength training kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. Like one of my buddies was just like, we should keep trying to like get stronger. I was like, all right. Was this before, like before social media? Mm-hmm. Like you were just got into powerlifting I, or I, deadlifting? I, I came in, I came on to social media with like a, 550 pound deadlift yeah wow yeah wow, that's crazy. so if you go back in my, my youtube videos i say my youtube started in um like 2013 but really my channel started in 2011 because there's like mm-hmm. seven videos that are just just clips of me doing one lift it'd be like deadlift i think the first video is like 420 pounds and mm-hmm. one of my first videos is a clip of me hitting 540 pounds on deadlift because that was just where i was at in my powerlifting program and i wanted to upload just the top set so I could put it on like bodybuilding.com forums and be like, hey, check out this new PR. So that's like... The bodybuilding.com forums. Yeah, the yeah, mist. Yeah. The I, mist. Was all, I was all about it. That's yeah, a dark, same, dark part of my life, bro. So dark, like, all right, <laughs> dark so part. Y- your deadlift used to be right around like 500. What is it now? <sighs> right now, right now, probably about 500. <laughs> um, You're not deadlifting anymore? No. Falling off? Falling off? Yeah, why, well, why did you stop powerlifting? Because that was, that was such a huge, not only like the come up for you, but also like a passion of yours, right? Yeah, you know, um, so every year after I got out of like being like the deadlift bra, like everyone mm-hmm. was, I was like, okay, like every video is, you know, I started seeing comments like, oh, Max deadlifting again. Was, all I posted was deadlifting. Right now, right. now you're probably like, Max, all you post is your stupid freaking golden doodle, right? Like that's how it was with deadlifts <laughs> was like every every video is just more deadlifts, more deadlifts, more deadlifts because it was like what people wanted to see is what I was good at. I'm like, why am I going to post bench footage, right? Um, and I kept like leveling up, leveling up. But then when I stopped caring as much about you know, having to be the strongest because all these, you know, social media started getting more popular and, you know, the, I say it in a kind way, but these freaks came out of the woodwork that are, yeah. you know, crushing my deadlift, right? Yeah. I was the, I was the king for a while. And then people are like, ha I've been living in the shadows and I can crush you, right? <laughs> so I was like, okay, I can't be the strongest anymore. So I'll lean into like my personality um, for my social media. And then pretty much like outside of like me competing, I kind of always did this yo-yo thing with my fitness is like during the winter and the fall, I'd 
eat whatever I want and kind of bulk up. And that's when I do my powerlifting. And during the summer, all my friends are dieting down because not most of my friends don't power lift and they'd want to get lean. And I don't want to be the, you know, the fat power lifter, mm-hmm. you know, in the summer. Right. Uh, so I, I would just lean down. So that messed up my ability to not only put on a lot of size over the years, mm-hmm. but also to continue to build my strength. Cause I'd, you know, add 10 pounds to my deadlift and then lose it all. Yeah. And then like add five pounds and lose it all. I'd add yeah. five pounds. And then just over time, the analogy that I'm going with now that I'll probably change is like I've essentially – with my deadlift, it's like I've almost – it's like if you were playing a game and like level 100 was like the top of your character, right? Mm-hmm. Like getting to level 80 or 90 is a whole lot of fun and you're cruising. Mm-hmm. But getting to from level 90 to 91 is a grind. And yeah. the the difference from your level 90 character to 91 is like minuscule. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm like a little stronger. Mm-hmm. My weapons are a little better. That's like kind of how I feel about deadlifts. I've hit 650, and for me to go much beyond that is such a commitment and such a time sink and such an effort to really not gain much from it. I'm not going to be any happier yeah. deadlifting mm-hmm. 675, 700, right. right? I can already deadlift more than 95% of the population, right? Um, I've hit these accolades. Mm-hmm. I've hit what I want to achieve, and I, you know, I don't make money from mm-hmm. lifting. I don't sell programs from yep. lifting. I don't really enjoy doing a bunch of competitions. I would only compete when they'd be like close by. Yeah, I w- that's not your end game anymore. Yeah, it's exactly. So it's like, but it took a lot for me to understand that like what got you to point A doesn't have to get you to point B. And like, yes, deadlifts were a huge component and it was like a big identity and people associated me with that. And I inspired a lot of people to deadlift and power lift, but that doesn't have to be what I do forever. Mm-hmm. And like right, right, understanding right, right. you can separate from that and the world's not going to implode. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was good that I didn't make my whole identity only about fitness. Right. You know? right. Whereas like if I'm not progressing in deadlift, mm-hmm. will people care? Which is what a lot of people do. They they let that one thing become their identity and then you know they lose themselves after that. And as much as people and people won't understand until they get older is like it ain't the same at 33, like my recovery and my, you know, as, as a, as a natural guy, like my body starts hurting. Like I have to, not only is it harder now I need to add in, Mm -hmm. if I really want to take power from the next level, I need to start adding in an hour before I lift for mobility, which I never needed to do. It's like, now I need to add even more time my day. And it's like, I, there will be nothing besides me saying I can deadlift a little bit more. Yeah. Like I'm not going to get any enjoyment out of it. I, I, I just don't care. Yeah, dude, I played a I played in a flag tourney this weekend, and I'm still like my body's still wrecked. Ex- exactly, <laughs> like, man. <laughs> so your first like seven to ten videos were you maxing out? Are you doing your deadlift? Like, what sparked your interest like towards migrating with social media? So Nick Wright in WB, uh, Nick Wright Bodybuilding was one of the OG in the YouTube space, yeah. and I consumed his content on social media, just like I, I, I watched Christian, I watched, you know, Scott Herman, I watched all the OGs, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, twin muscle workout, you know, Scooby, all the people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, Matt Ogus, I mean, I'm forgetting every people, but, yeah. uh, he just happened to, he broke up with his, he lives in, he lives in Rhode Island and he broke up with his girlfriend and his cousin went to my school and he tweeted one time, was like, Hey, I'm moving to Richmond, Virginia for the summer. Does anyone have a gym to work out with? And back then you could easily message people because, you know, he had like Mm. 30,000 subscribers, which was crazy at the time. Um, And I was like, yo, I live here. We should come work out at like my school gym. It's really nice. And like, I'm actually like, I'm a fan of yours, but I'm also like an actual serious lifter. Like I can lift heavy weight. Like I'm not just like some super fan boy who like can't keep up with you. Like I can strength train. We should work out together. Mm. And he was like, sure. I was nice. like, cool. So we like linked up and I started being kind of like a character in his videos because he was like, oh, this skinny guy who doesn't look like he can deadlift a lot can deadlift a lot. And at the time, you know, there was no one doing stuff. So uh, I was like featured on his videos and then he was just kind of like, yeah, you should start your own channel. Yeah. And I just started yeah. and it was the the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. By far. So, so that's so actually my, good my, girl, my girlfriend's best thing ever having me. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta, always, you gotta always throw it in there, man. <laughs> um, so right now, like, you have a lot of things going on. You have sour strips, you have Ever Forward, you have your content stuff that's always growing. I want, I want to know how do you have work life balance? Because for entrepreneurs, we know that work life balance is not really a thing. You're always go go go, you know, diffusing whatever in the middle of the night. Like, how do you? When do you turn it off? You know, it's interesting is that 
life is more hectic than ever. And I say that in relation to how successful the businesses are, right? Yep. So because generally the bigger the businesses get, the more uh, time commitments, stress, it kind of scales relative, relative like, right, for the most part. Um, and I have, I'm like more relaxed in my off time than I ever have been, which is strange nice. because I'm busier than ever. Yeah. Um, a, a huge attribute of that is, is my girlfriend for sure, because I want to spend time with her. And before it was like, I almost felt like I had to run at full speed 24 seven. And if I wasn't, then I was slacking and someone else was going to take mm -hmm. my spot. Um, but now I'm like, Hey, if you're strategic and use your time wisely, you don't need to, you know, do all these things. And, um, for me, I, uh, I'm a huge advocate of it. And I think that, um, what I'm able, but, but what I will say is like what I'm able to do now and like essentially turn off at like 7 mm -hmm. PM besides like, no matter what, like I have my phone near me and if like I either get a text or an email, like I'm going to look at it mm -hmm. all the time and I'll decide of like, does this need to be handled at this exact mm -hmm. moment? Most of the time it doesn't. Um, I'll do it the next day, but a lot of times I'll be like, Oh, I need to run to the computer real fast and f answer this email. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, what I'm able to do now is not how I got to this point, right? Like I wasn't always able to do this. And I think that's so important is like you do need to sprint for a long time before yeah. you're able to kind of just cruise um, while not getting comfortable, but finding that that balance. And I think with the, the whole social media thing these days of everyone with like the hustle culture and everyone, every, everything that people are talking about, it almost people feel like they're being lazy pieces of shit if they – are watching a Netflix show and not yeah. working on their business. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's understanding what is needed from you and leaning into those like aspects of your life when they need it, but also realizing that sometimes just doing work to do work isn't mm -hmm. necessarily effective and it's not necessary. And you don't always have to, it's not like you like, you don't have to scale your business as much as it could, but it's like, right. Hey, would your business scale? I don't know. It's a hard way to... to, to like the world is not on fire. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's yeah. like, yeah. yeah, you could work 24-7. And yes, when I'm, you know, on a Sunday, when I'm f playing Diablo or something and mm -hmm. just chilling and like just relaxing, like, could I be st strategizing something for the business? I could. Yeah. But I'm choosing to not do, mm -hmm. not to work on my business, to, to do some other things because it's like... So you'd rather waste time playing Fortnite than working business? Like at that moment, yeah. Like at that moment, <laughs> I consider it like a, <clears throat> I consider it like a mental type break, right? Yeah. Like, you know, if you're if you're working on the business twenty four seven, then you're you're gonna drain yourself out. You're you're not gonna be thinking properly. But if you just take that break, whether it's like an hour or two playing Diablo, like or seven, it, it, it gives you, yeah, gives you that time to, to download Diablo. You know, gives gives your brain that time. Yeah, I, you know? I think. I think having balance is key, but it, but again, it wasn't like I knew this day one. And there was many, many years where I did not have a social life, where yeah. I was, I mean, go look at my, um, when I lived in Northern Virginia, I would put out these videos day in the life when I worked my corporate mm -hmm. job and YouTube. And I was putting out like three, four YouTube videos a, a week, running everything with Everford, you know, having eight hours of my day taken up by the corporate job and then trying to go make content, having to mm -hmm. film at the gym. I couldn't film until eight o'clock at night. So I had, I had to like film from eight mm -hmm. to 10, then get home and edit. And there was a long time when yeah. I, I lived and breathed what I was doing and I would sacrifice doing other things. Grind mode. Yeah, build, exactly. Build mode. Yeah. It, it's like hard yeah. to like decide when those times are, yeah. but like, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years and I know it needs to get done and I'm going to get it done. But now it's, but it's also like, again, having the relationship with my mm -hmm. girlfriend is, I want to turn off at seven. Right. I want to just spend time with her. I want to just like lay and watch the office. I think it, I think it's an age thing as well, right? When you're yeah. older, you're like, you know, you want to you want that more quality time with those yeah. people, and you don't want to always be working and mm -hmm. not not. That, have that's why I stress is like you know in not like you not like these have to be the exact parameters of like when you right sprint in your life, but like in your twenties, sprint. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully you set the, the goal is to set yourself up so that at some point you don't need to like, you know, go crazy right. working 24 yeah. seven. Yeah. And some people are like, you know, and I, I think honestly, that's still think they're kind of frauding a little bit. Like no one really, and when people are like, I love to work, like, yeah, I get, I get it. Trust me. Like I, I, you're preaching the choir. I love yeah. working on business, mm -hmm. but like, there's no one that's like, get out of bed. They're like, I fucking can't wait to sit down and 
do some admin work. And then when I get off, I can't wait to do that. And I can't wait to, yeah. while I'm eating food, answer email. Like no, yeah. no one's, that's not a life, bro. Like yeah. that's not. And yeah. Um, yeah, most definitely, bro. You just gotta, you gotta find that balance. And it took me a long time to get mm -hmm. to this point. And again, it's like what I'm able to do now, I could not do many years ago and still be at the point yeah. I'm at now. But um, I have a different outlook on life. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I, I understand what I need to do to keep leveling up. And mm -hmm. so I, I think a lot of, a lot of people kind of know your history with corporate as well as like why you started Everford. You know, obviously a lot of the contribution is from your dad. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, do you credit some of your motivation like towards your business, your aspirations, like towards your dad? Yeah. I, I mean, so my dad was like, so he, like he passed when I was 15 and, but from, from 10 to 15, I did not live with him. I lived like four hours away with my mom. So I saw him obviously significantly less, right? I, right. you know, maybe once a month or something, mm -hmm. um, when we would like kind of exchange kids for like the weekend. Um, so when I turned 10 from 10 to 15, uh, before he got sick, that's when he was like kind of more in like, well, I guess a little younger. He was an entrepreneurial mode, but he kept like evolving. So he owned a bunch of, um, he worked like cra crazy amounts of jobs, worked, worked for like Aramark and worked for like, I think he worked at UPS. He would just work at every, everything just to make ends meet to like mm -hmm. provide for the family. He'd work really late, like, you know, the night shift, work right, right. deep yeah. in the night um, for a long time. And then when he started his entrepreneurial journey, he opened up a, a, a coffee shop. And I remember that drastically because we were like, you know, tearing up the tiles in the place. And, you know, then he opened a, a couple different coffee shops, opened a steakhouse, then started getting what? real estate. Yeah. Wow. And um, so he, he did a lot of that. And I remember a lot of it. Uh, but it wasn't like my dad being an entrepreneur was ever like the driving force of like, I also want to be an entrepreneur that like never have cr has crossed my mind. Um, but I definitely do relate a lot of uh, my mindset to the like, like I think of like, I'm like my dad, did, my dad didn't know how to run a business. My dad didn't know how to start a coffee mm -hmm. store, a physical store and have employees and stuff. And he, yeah. he figured it out and he, he, you know, worked for himself and he seemed to, to love and enjoy it. And, you know, I try to, do that as well. But, but he was also a family man. He was also, you know, wanted to spend as much time as he could with his wife and, you know, his kids. And, um, and he did sacrifice a lot. And there was a lot of times when we'd be spending all day, every day in, in the coffee shop, in the office upstairs, cause he had to work and he had to run it and like, you know, spend long hours in there. Um, but it was like, I understood he was doing what he needed to do to provide for the family. And it, so, uh, I, I definitely think that it does, you know, contribute a little bit. But it wasn't. It was never like a, I want to follow the footsteps of like yeah. being an entrepreneur because my dad it was. It just happened. I thought when I when I graduated, me and my my college buddies always joked about it that um you know you hear people about uh, saying like oh I don't, I don't want to make a lot of money if I'm miserable at the job but we would always joke back in college be like I don't care if I'm miserable at my job if I can make a bunch of money and ride jet skis <laughs> in the weekend like I don't care in my goal in life we always said I was like I want to have a corner office. At a high rise building, and I want to have a briefcase every day. Yeah. And when I call someone into my office, I want them to be stressed of why I need to have a meeting yeah. with them. Cause, <laughs> because, you know, when I'd go into a manager's, I'd be like, what did I do? Like, yeah. oh, and you'd like, yeah. would be on your back. Like, I was like, I, for some reason, I was like, I, I want that. I want to yeah. be in that. I want to be that level of a position in a company. You're technically doing that. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm not as, you know. now people aren't afraid. They're like, <laughs> like, what's up, fucker, dude? What do yeah. you need, dude? Um, but like, yeah, my goal was just like mm -hmm. work a corporate job, yeah. make a bunch of money. Yeah. yeah. Like, so it wasn't like when I, I was in college. A lot of people, you know, they have that in their mind and they don't realize that, you know, you can actually start your own thing and do your own and work for yourself. Yeah. Well, the problem is, see, now the problem is that like everyone wants to work for themselves. Now with social media, right? Yeah. Bro, we, we talked about that cool the other day. To, like, to be a business owner mm -hmm. or they like to call entrepreneur. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're just an online coach. When you were, uh, <laughs> so I want to, I want to jump back to this, get a little, a little deep here. Yeah. If you don't Let's mind. Do Let's get balls. Uh, deep. So you were 15 when your when your dad passed. How did that How did that affect you? Like in your in your teenage years? You know, it, it hits me a lot more about. Uh, so for anyone listening, uh, my dad passed away from ALS, which is uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. The people who did like the ice bucket challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, he and he had like a pretty quick. Uh, I don't want to say turnaround, but like uh, from when he got diagnosed, he didn't yeah. really tell the family until it started being like apparent that something was wrong mm. with him. Like I think he so like told, typical dude, like I'm not telling anybody. Correct. I think I mean I think it told his wife, yeah. my stepmom at the mm -hmm. time, and maybe maybe my brother, or my oldest. Uh, but like he didn't tell me mm -hmm. until it was like, you know, he started having symptoms of mm -hmm. like 
deteriorating, right? Mm. And uh, I remember him like sitting me down the table and like telling me like it's like I'm dying, like mm. and it was. But when I was a kid, when I was 15, I like I. It's like it didn't affect me. It was I was just like oh, okay, mm-hmm. like I, I but not in like a fuck you kind of way. It was just I just like I was like You're too young. Yeah, yeah and, and I young. but now I'm like 15. Actually, you you understood what was going on, but like I remember when like my, my mom and my stepdad came into my room when I was with my mom mm-hmm. uh, in Richmond when my dad passed. And I remember coming in and she was just ball. They were both bawling and, um, you know, telling me that he had passed and I didn't start crying. I was just like, Oh, yeah. like, okay. Yeah. yeah when I, you're I young, it's hard to process. Did you, you, you uh, know. <clears throat> so around that time, like, what did, what did you turn? Did you turn to anything like for, so for me, for example, um, when my, when my brother got into his car accident, I was in seventh grade. Mm-hmm. And I think like for me, it just, I, I became like really like isolated. I isolated myself from my family. I was in my room a lot and like I, I turned to like video games. So I, I like, that's what kind of when I became yeah. like, I guess it was like an escape from reality. So I guess what I'm asking is, did you have any escape or anything like that? You know, I, I can't remember, mm-hmm. but I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like now, like if, if I went like really deep talking about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the disease yeah. and how it affect mm-hmm. my dad like yeah i'll i'll start crying like mm-hmm. for sure and like it affects me a lot more now because it's like when you're older you have a lot of yeah you know uh clarity you, you think back i mean I, yeah I, same here right you think back on like yeah you think i think you think about it from a different perspective now well, well not only and, and it's like you have so many you start realizing the importance of life right. obviously and you um you start thinking about you start almost like uh bringing down yourself because mm-hmm. you're like why why wasn't i around him more right. like you know it's like yeah, when my yeah. dad passed and I'm like now i'm like why the fuck was i in yeah, richmond i could have done this i could have like, done why, that. why was mm-hmm. i not being like mom like whatever if i need to change schools for the time while my dad is sick you know four hours away let me do it like i want to be with him for his life like i why why didn't i do that you know right. and um so so that's pretty tough but y- yeah. y- you can't change the past and uh mm-hmm. y- you know it's a it's a very interesting way to think about it and if you if anyone ever wants to get like really deep into this um explanation uh, uh i had a podcast with my brother mm-hmm. and and we had a very really like deep conversation about it okay and um you know it's a weird way to think about it but it's and it's 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 cuz it's not in a positive way but it's like our dad passing that happening made everything else happened in our lives right. to get us to this point. Like mm-hmm. if like, would we be leaving the same impact on the world if right. he didn't pass? And obviously you'd be like, well, I don't care about all that. I'd right. rather have him here. 100%. But if he's like, you know, like his passing gave yep. us a purpose to deliver his message and start these things. And like, it's, it's, it's a weird way to kind of look at it. Yeah. Um, but it, it, you know, with my, and my dad was like only in his like early forties when he, mm-hmm. when he, when he went, cause like when he got sick, it was like a, Mm-hmm. two to three years and he was gone um which a lot of people can live five ten years you know with it um and uh so it was definitely a quick a quick mm-hmm. deterioration on his part um but yeah it, you know life is so precious and yeah it's it's something that now i think i think that's one thing that i love so much about creating content i know my videos are like really really goofy and whatnot and you know all my titles are fucking you know clickbait and everything but uh it's cool to know that like when I have a kid, they can look back and like see how their dad grew up and see, you know, mm-hmm. his life unfold. And, you know, I have like, besides me as a literal baby being held by my dad, I have no photos with him. Mm-hmm. I have no, I have like three photos of him as an adult, you know, cause I, you know, I, don't, yeah. I don't need videos of him. Mm-hmm. I have no photos and I'm like, I want to capture all these moments cause it's important to me because, you know, you never mm-hmm. know what's going to happen. And uh, it's important that like, I, that's why I want to have a family and I want to, yeah. you know, just like the memories that I do have with my dad of, you know, the positive things that he did with me. I want to be able to give that to my kid, kids, you know, sure. my, you know, my family and, and, and get, because I know, I know the impact that he had on my family and then, mm-hmm. and the kind things that people say about their experience with him. You know, it's like people would be like, when I would go into the coffee shop, he, you know, he knew everyone by name. He would yeah. make everyone laugh. He would, you know, it's like. That's I want to leave that positive impact. Yeah. So it's like if tomorrow is my last day here, I want like to go out knowing that like I impacted the world, yeah. even if it's just making people smile, maybe making people mm-hmm. laugh. And yeah. you know now it's cool we can build <clears throat> oh, brands that leave, that leave impacts on yeah. people. Um, 
but uh yeah speaking on that this is a <clears throat> a story about you actually so uh, i think it was when we were in australia we went to australia for the uh mm-hmm. arnold arnold i'll show you um uh, we were flying and this is how ash and i knew you were a good dude so we were uh we went into a gift shop or whatever everybody already left and we were like sh- we we're shopping there for maybe like 15 20 minutes and we came out and you were still waiting for us and ashley ashley looked at me and she goes like max waited for us like that's so nice of him like, <laughs> such a good guy you know and like everybody else is just like you know dipped out but i don't even uh, remember that so yeah yeah so it's a you know so you did you, you did left an impact on us and in, in that way so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So you are a good dude beyond the camera. And and I, at my funeral, Derek's gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> "Max would always wait for everyone out of the gift yeah. shops." <sighs> That's good how dude. He's just, just <laughs> I think it's more just like you took the time to, you know, take make the effort to, yeah. just, you know, it's the little a little gesture of kindness, right? <clears throat> yeah. When you when you become a dad, your perspectives on life change so much, and it's like you have a newfound appreciation for like what your parents did for you yeah. because you now get to take all of the good and all of the bad and translate the bad into the good and it just changes everything like your whole purpose in life bro yeah, i was like, saying say, i feel like it like yeah it gives you that purpose yeah you, it's like you can never explain what it means to be like a parent until you are a parent like it's yeah. You have humans depending on you, yeah. you know, and like when your dad, what you were saying, your dad used to work all day and night just to make ends meet, like, because his purpose was like you guys, like providing, you know, for you guys, like putting food on the table, like, it's crazy, man. Like your patience, your, your work-life balance. Like I used to not have a work-life balance either, yeah. you know, even with us being here, like we're always like, go, 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 go. I've always been like the same, like work as long as I can, as much as I can sprint. And then you now you don't your kids don't care about anything, but like you at that moment. Yeah, I, I think like you know I, I I say this in a way of like I was never like uh, neglected at all, but like I remember my dad, you know, having to work a lot to make ends meet, and him yeah. not being you know whether it be it was in the military, uh, then you know worked all these jobs, and there's I the memories I have are like I remember that he wasn't around a lot, but not in a like. Bad dad way. wasn't around yeah. it was just like yeah. dad was working you knew he was working yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and uh you know that was my upbringing and i had a great relationship with my father mm-hmm. yeah. um but something that i'm trying to do is like i want to do this you know whole sprint for as long as possible and build enough wealth so that you know when taylor and i have kids hey. and we're raising them <laughs> yeah i know it's gonna happen i gotta announce you guys um we'll you know that. i, I want to be at a point where i can be there all the time yeah, and yeah. not in a way of like my dad wasn't there for me so i'm gonna be yeah, there it's yeah. it's but it's like i remember that and i remember being like i wish dad was around more but i understood what he yeah. was doing yeah and now i want to be to the point where like you know not only not only to my girlfriend i'm be like you know i got you like but i'm like i got this family like i got this i got this house i got mm-hmm. i we don't have to worry about the bills you mm-hmm. know and when when little billy has a you know a, a soccer game like, i'm going to be there same i'm going to i'm going to be there i'm going to be at all the things i'm going to be taking i'm helping take him to school and like <laughs> yeah and it's like i want to yeah. be there and like I, that's why i'm working yeah. so hard and like you know when i was early in my 20s and mm-hmm. making good money and stuff it was like so i could buy cool shit and stuff mm-hmm. and now it's like i'm doing it so that my partner and my family yeah. can have the best life ever right yeah. like period right it's like what do you yeah. want i got it for you mm-hmm. like, it's like when i when i uh wake up my son every day and like if i'm dressed not in like my house clothes he knows and then he's like daddy's gonna work and th- those little moments where you're like damn like he knows already yeah he's going to work same thing it's like mm-hmm. if he has a soccer game swim practice like i made it a priority to to leave everything here to go take him to swim practice because those yep. little moments like like you're saying if today's your last day you don't know like things mm-hmm. change can happen in a matter of like a minute. Yeah, I just I want to I want to yeah. raise my and I think everyone ideally yeah. wants this, but like I yeah. I want to raise, you know. So I also had a podcast with my mom, and uh, I I've uh, her father, my granddad, uh, her memories of him is that she was like he was always there for me. Yeah, never like he's like he never like yelled at the children. Whenever we get in trouble, he would just sit us down and we'd have a very normal, like a calm conversation about like why mm-hmm. we like this can't 
happen and like all these things. And, and I was like, and her relationship was so good with her dad of like the, the, yeah. the, the, the structure of as a family and how he was always there, whatever. And I was like, I want that. I, I, I want that as well. Yeah. Um, and it's like, I just want to, I want to like, when my kids get older, you know, not only you pray that they're like, uh, you know, not turn out to be a degenerate, right. <laughs> you don't want to like, yeah, or yeah. like get into trouble or, you know, yeah. go down the wrong path. But I want to like, I want like my children to be like, my dad was there for um, my dad. I did everything for this family and I want to raise them with good morals and good ethics. And, yeah. um, it, it's just so important to me because, you know, I think I turned out great, mm-hmm. uh, as like the way that my mindset is my head on my shoulders. And I want to make sure that I can make my kid even better than, yeah. than I feel like yeah, I am of, of, of where I, where I slack. I want the like, Kim to make it up yeah. or, you know, we're going to make a good dad, man. Yeah. Thanks. That's man. a good, yeah. that's a good transition into the second leg social media. We've already touched on it a little bit. Um, but, we can we can transition to it, talk about it on a little bit deeper level here. Um, so when you first created your YouTube and everything, you mentioned that you know you did want to kind of capture all of that for like your family eventually one day. Mm-hmm. Was that always in your mind, in the back of your no. mind? No, 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 no. That mm-hmm. it, it was. You know, the the only thing I'll, I'll, I'll like get in on that is like a lot of people for a long time when I go on vacations and stuff, be like, like, why do you want to film this? Why don't you just like be in the moment? And to them, I was like. Like, to be honest, like half of it for me was like, so other people could enjoy it. I was like, when I'm riding a jet ski, half of what I'm thinking about is not, oh damn, this is a lot of fun. I was like, man, I bet I can make a really cool video. So like the, the people who can't ride jet skis can be like, can feel what it was like, you know, like can, can mm-hmm. feel like this in, in, in entertainment. So like I experience things that I want other people to experience as well. And I want to like document them in a way. So that's kind of, that was like my, my kind of reasoning, but no, only when my mind shift has sh- shifted probably in the past couple of years. Okay. Um, when a lot of, you know, mm. you know, people around me have, you know, passed unexpectedly. I've had a, uh, you know, a buddy not too long ago. Who's uh, one of the OG YouTubers names Garrett from aesthetics passed away. Yeah. I used to watch them too. Yeah. And like, yeah. you just think of these things and it's like, I, if, if I pass away, I, I want, you know, it's like, it, it's a kind of a, a darker way to think, but it's like, when I have a kid and I, and I, if I ever get sick, I want, I want my kid to have memories that he can look back of his dad, Yeah, you know? And like, yeah, it's me fucking, you know, eating yeah. Chipotle or something, but like, it, it, it's a thing. I don't know. And yeah. I, I'm not trying to say that I have like some deep purpose of my YouTube yeah. videos, but that's like a, I think an added benefit of that's why I continue to keep going because sure. I'm just like, I want to. I want to relive these memories whenever I want, and I want to mm-hmm. capture them. So you know, it's either, that, e- it's either eating Chipotle or aspics. <laughs> yeah, things, well, that's so. why you know. I, so I'm about to go to uh, I'm about to go to Mexico next week with my girlfriend, right? And um, she, first of all, she's like so understanding of my my social media and mm-hmm. filming and everything. And and I tell her because when we were planning this trip again, we looked. I was like, Let, let's watch our like Mexico video from last year, and we had like such a great time reliving it. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, I t- tell her, I was like you know, and I'm really good about how I film and so it doesn't like intrude on our lives and everything. But I was like, I told her, I was like, that's why like when we go on vacation, I do want to film because I want yeah. us to relive it. Like I yeah. want us, to, like I know we have it in our memories, but like I want to, re- I want to relive us on that boat. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I want to relive us, you know, catching like you know, snorkeling and stuff. Like yeah. I want to have those memories. So I think it's important to capture it because again, mm-hmm. I have, I have a box of photos that is like me raising that my mom sent me that have like all me as a child. Right. Mm. And like every photo in that, in that box is like the only photos I have of my dad. And there's like, again, besides when I'm a literal toddler, there's like maybe yeah. two, two or three photos that I have with me as a kid with my dad. Yeah. I have none. I have none. I have no photos of them. I don't have a photo of them in my house. Cause I don't have any photos. Yeah. The, I got no photos. I mean, that's like, essentially the, the, the main reason why Dan and I started a podcast for, all of this, right? The, the business is so that we can eventually look back on it one day and, and the oh, YouTube that's what we're channel, doing yeah. or yeah. Yeah. The YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's uh, <laughs> with the social media stuff too. It's like, we know we're not going to be the coolest business or the biggest business we're or whatever. Trying to, yeah. We're not trying to be, we just want to be able to look back and view 10 years from now, like where our mindset was, where we are in life, like how we approach things, like everything. And document so the journey. Yeah, document yep. the journey, like mm-hmm. it's important. And that's why like I try to film now, get back into my personal YouTube too. Cause I realized like, damn, like those three years, there was such a big gap where I didn't even, mm-hmm. I don't remember what happened if yeah. I were to think back 10 years from now, same thing, man. It's like now I try to take as many photos as like 
in the moment, like with him, with my kids, with my parents, like as much as I can too. Cause like, even with photos, like you only have a photo, but if you have a video, you get to see everything that happened in that moment yeah. from me. Mm-hmm perspective but yeah yeah i I, and i just like like making content yeah Yeah, that that too that because you're super entertaining so it's always was it it wasn't i remember you telling me this it wasn't always it didn't always come that easy for you to just to just switch it on right well i I guess i mean i when i my upbringing was like i I got in trouble a lot when i was younger and in school but it wasn't for like you know drugs or fights or whatever it was for just running my mouth in class it was like being the class clown like all i was was sitting in the hallway with my desk i was having to like get kicked (laughs) out i was getting c grades because i'd get points taken off for talking like Mm -hmm. stupid shit right um so i always had this like innate like desire to it's like it's like not like i want to be the center of attention but i just i want to i loved being like, dude, Max is funny. Like, I I love like providing that like laughter to people. Like, Should I do just a stand I, up. Yeah, you know, I've I've gone on a whole. There's <laughs> a whole. Kind of I had a whole conversation with my old videographer Oz about the stand up thing. I have like my thoughts on it, but <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just really like entertaining people. I like the, you know, I love when I make videos and I am editing it up and I'm like laughing my own stupid jokes and I'm like, dude, yeah. people are gonna love this shit. And like, and then I see the comments of like, oh my god, like I died laughing at this thing. Like that's what I love. Yeah. I, I love that. Like. Whereas, you know, for a long time, I thought I had had these like, you know, I followed the kind of footsteps of Christian where I was like, I need to have these motivational speeches at the end of my videos. And I was like, <laughs> how I can in- p- change people's lives. And I was like, I think the change I will bring into people's lives should be more natural to me. Laughter. And it should yeah. just be, yeah, Laughter, yeah. Yeah. So with, with social media, you're obviously, you know, big on all platforms, right? Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, podcast now, pretty big. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you learn how to, or when did you realize you could, monetize it because now you you have videos where they're sponsors for videos right yeah like how did you get to that point luck i guess i mean (laughs) uh you know i started social media with without the no one was making money from it like you had Mm -hmm. occasional people to make a little bit of money i'm sure early on you know christian started selling like programs and stuff Mm -hmm. but from from literally from making the content people weren't really making money so it was just that's where what created the true authenticity back then was because you knew people were doing it because they loved it because they weren't making money yeah and i had to work my corporate job for three years mm-hmm. yeah. while i made videos now people in three months are like i'm working for myself i made yeah. a you know tiktok and it blew up right yeah. so it's yeah, like that's pretty true, it's yeah. just a different kind of thing so i mean i started making money i mean very early on i started doing like tiny sponsors where i'd make like 50 i'd get like 50 dollars. so if you go way back in my videos they're uh in like 13, 14, you could watch in the intro of the video. I'd had this thing come up called like I'll pump you up.com. And it was like a website. It was like an intro. It was like a three second clip. And the way they presented it, they were like a online supplement store. They sold like a bunch of people, but they would, they'd be like, Hey, look, I'll give you $50 a month in free supplements. Okay. $50 (laughs) in credit to the website. My mind you not like actual $50, $50 in credits credits and all all you got to do is put this like three second intro in the beginning of your videos mm-hmm. i was like sure fuck yeah dude yeah. free that's my that's my protein for the month yeah. boom done mm-hmm. absolutely and then my friend nick nick wright was like max you are plastering someone else's company at the beginning of your videos for fifty dollars <laughs> and i was like yeah but i don't care yeah so i was like i started making a little bit of money from like doing little things like that and then you know i started getting like my first like sponsors mm-hmm. and working with uh different brands um, but I didn't really start making Who's your first big sponsor. I mean, I started working with, uh, Mark Lobliner's supplement. Company, oh yeah. MTS, yeah. But his way was actually pretty good. Oh no, it was fantastic. The chocolate was fantastic. Yeah, it was great. Honestly, the pre-workout, I didn't personally think was that great yeah. in terms of the flavor and the mixability, but the protein was like the cookies. Phenomenal. Cream was like, oh, it was like machine way or something. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. It was so good. But oh, yeah. I think I made from that. I think he paid me like. 200 300 bucks a month and then i'd make like five percent or i'd make like i'd make commission Mm -hmm. but it was it was such a strange way because i would only have a five percent discount code for people which is already barely anything and it was only for the first time purchase so they couldn't get discount after that i was like i'm never gonna make any money i was like (laughs) yeah i was like i'm never gonna make any money so then i then i finally started working with ghost and started making more and Mm -hmm. you know now i'm doing well and um, the sub, the, the sponsorship just kind of came out of nowhere, but, but again, yeah. it was, I was never like 
waking up every day like, God, I need to start making some money from this Never social media. Goal, it was just like, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I got my job and I got my side thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm starting to make a little bit of money. I'm just going to keep going. Like, I'll just see how this unfolds. So it was never like the goal of it. What was um, the what was the pivotal moment where you decided that you needed to leave your corporate job to pursue social media? It was it was actually July of 2017, so almost exactly what seven years ago. Um, six six years. Is ago? that when you moved to Houston? No, I moved. Call it I, December 2018, so okay. call it 2019. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so July of 2016 was when I quit. I'd worked for three years right out of school because right, basically right when I graduated college was when I started social media you know, YouTube and stuff. Mm. So I worked for the, the main part. Um, and it, it, it got to the point where like for a solid year before, so from 2015, 2016, I started tracking my income from like ever forward and social media mm. for like the little bit of money I was making on social media. And it was very consistent for like a year. So I told myself, mm. I was like, look, if I, for 12 months I can, you know, it can have a small fluctuation, but like it needs to be relatively similar income mm -hmm. every month to show that it's sustainable. And I did that for 12 months. I think I was bringing in like, and, th and this was with the clothing, which, you know, I, I still yeah. to this day don't like pull money from the businesses, but like I was making like seven or eight grand a month wow. for like a year back wow. then. But it, it was mainly yeah. the clothing, like yeah. from social media, actually, like I was making like two, right? Yeah. So did you, uh, just to jump back for uh, Ever Forward, when did you start Ever Forward in relation to social media? Late 2014. So almost two, probably, yeah, essentially two years in. Two years in. Uh, okay. Yeah, because it was like end of 2014. So mm -hmm. maybe like a year and a half to two years in was when I created the clothing company. You, you started selling deadlift bra shirts. Deadlift bra. And then you yeah. went to I did the merch. Right? And then I was like yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the first like, uh, I was one of the first like content creators that wanted to create a brand that wasn't them with their name, but also using overseas manufacturing. Mm. No one was mm. really doing that. Like, yeah. yeah, some people were doing it if they weren't like influencers, yeah. but in my circle of like the 15 YouTubers, mm -hmm. no one was doing that. Yeah. Like, so I was like, oh, I really want to kind of go above and beyond. I made this like almost like Under Armour type of like materials, like moisture looking really nice. Probably cotton spandex. It was like a polyester. Oh, it, polyester. It, it was it, it was like the dry fit type yeah. of material. It yeah, was like yeah, a, oh, this. really nice. Yeah, yeah. So it was like for the time. I yeah. mean, it was like advanced. Oh, like <laughs> and it, and, it, and, it, and it was for like all the terms. Like if yeah. you got it, you're like this is not like everything else that people yeah. are making. Yeah, um, it wasn't just shitty merch. Yeah, exactly. Like, Gildan Gildan. Yeah. yeah, and uh, <laughs> so I I started the the clothing, and then um, you know, so I realized that financially I could support myself. But then also it came in, and, and the biggest thing is like I never made a lot of money at my social or my uh, my my full time job. Like I think at the peak, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think I ever even hit fifty k. I think I hit, was. What like, was your actual like t job title? It was a, a technical recruiter, like okay. IT staffing, okay. so hiring nice. people for other companies. Yeah. Um. I I made like mid forties, mm -hmm. like just because I was an average worker. I just, my heart wasn't in it, but and I, I I wasn't like trying to like really like progress in it because I was just like oh I'm gonna work on this little side thing kind of whenever. Um. So I wasn't making a ton of money, but I was always like, well, even if I quit, like I'm going to miss out on $40,000 a year. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if I can balance both, I don't want to just quit so I can right. watch Netflix in the middle of the day. I want to have something to do. And right now I can do all of it. So why would I quit? Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until I started like using up a lot of my time off and then being like, oh, I want to go to these expos, but now I need, I need to like decide which expo I can go to because I can't go to all of them because of... I can't take off these days of work. So when right. I started missing opportunities and being able to travel more and collab, you know, f more freely. Um, and then for me, it's like I never had this like downtime because the exact moment that I quit my job was the exact moment that I started opening District Barbell, my own private gym. Yeah, you and Peter. Filming facility. Yeah. yeah me, yeah, Peter, yeah. and this other guy, Brian. And like, so it's like the day that I quit, like the next week we were like signing the lease and like getting the keys for this thing. And then that was like, uh, you can go watch the whole warehouse building series, which yeah. is really cool. And uh, so it's like, I never had downtime. Like I never was like, I quit my job and it was like, what do I do with my time? It was immediately, yeah. let's build an entire warehouse. You know, let's replace all the ceiling tiles by hand. Let's cut all the mats by hand. Let's yeah. let's do all the work ourselves. Let's paint all the, like I was doing all the stuff that now I would pay someone to do, right? Um, but then I didn't have the money and right. I was just like, you know, hustling. So bootlegging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like I like your your whole come up with social media because you know I mean we we saw like the rise of Alpha Lee and like mm -hmm. we're there for such a long time. I think being able to what you said about like social media back then was about passion because nobody made money is such a valuable lesson. Now that you're have 
essentially 10 years of consistency, you're, you know, you've been making great money from it, successful businesses, everything like that. And it allowed you to buy your sister a car. Yeah. That was probably, you know, probably super meaningful to you. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what year I was. 2018, 2019. Yeah. It was before I moved to Texas. Yeah. Uh, it was around Christmas time. Cause I remember I like, I had to like drive three hours to buy her this car and then drive back that same day and like get on a flight to go to Texas, I think actually. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, my, how do I word this? Uh, not everyone in my family, you know, everyone in my family has kind of gone down different paths. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, with, with my sister who the world doesn't really know much about her that much. Um, you have two she, siblings. Yeah. I have an older brother and older sister. So I'm the, I'm the youngest. My sister's th- two years older than me. And then, so she's almost 36. Yeah, almost 36. And then my brother's almost 38. Um, wow, Chase is 38. Yeah, he's 37 oh, he right now. For yeah, he's four years wow. older than me. Wow. And um, it's this tuning genetics, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but so my sister, uh, she she's 30, she's 35 right now, and she has like a seven year. So about when she was like 28, 29, she got pregnant um, and had uh, her son. And for the longest time, she... You know, she lived about two and a half hours away from my mom. So whenever we go to Christmas vacation or whatever, um, and go to my mom's, um, it was it was almost like there was always like an excuse of why my sister couldn't come, and it was generally like some financial troubles of you know I whether it be like I had this old crappy car, the car needs new tires, and I can't afford the tires, or it needs new brakes, mm-hmm. can't afford the brakes, uh, you know, can't come. So she kept like missing all these like holidays and stuff and I was like I want to see my sister and and you know when she had a, a son and I was like I I don't feel right as uh, his uncle knowing that my you know my nephew's like riding around in a shitty car that like isn't potentially mm-hmm. safe and and I want to see my sister at family events so I just like was like I'm going to buy my sister a car um so yeah we, you know went down there surprised her she was you know very very appreciative she you know Many, many years later, she still has the, the same car today. It's in great condition. Um, and I actually just moved her this year. Um, she was going through some stuff, and I moved her down here uh, about eight months ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. You used so, to. Yep. Wow. So I moved her down here, awesome. gave her a job working for me. Um, wow. Put her in a, uh, a really nice mm-hmm. condo on the lake, actually. Um, so, you know, got her a place and was basically like, look, there's a lot of stress going on in your life and it really comes down to like kind of the people you're around mm-hmm. and the financial situation you're in. Let me take the financial situation off your plate and let me separate you from the the kind of like the world you're in that is causing so much drama and negativity in your life and like just kind of come like try to like kind of reset here. Come here, live here for a year. I'll give you a job. You don't have to worry about finances. I'll make sure you, have, you can cover all your bills. I'll put you in a nice place. You know, you'll be close to here. Um, so she's been doing that, um, which again, people don't know about yeah. all that stuff. Um, that's awesome. amazing, man. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, it's it's something that it's cool. It's really cool to be able to do it mm-hmm. um, because you know, it's like how how dare I be very successful what I'm doing and have anyone in my family, you know, be suffering, mm-hmm. you know, or have like financial burden. And there's a certain level of like, you know, hey. Yeah you do need to teach people how to, how to fish, right? You can't just right. give them fish. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I just, I think it's like, what's the point of all this if I can't give back to, mm-hmm. you know, my, my loved ones and my, and my family. And I hope to, you know, you know, move my sister down here and I, you know, bought her a car many years ago and I've done some other cool things with my family um, that even the internet doesn't really, really yeah. kind of know about. But yeah, I hope, I hope that the things that I've done in the past are minuscule to what I can do for them in the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's kind of like a big, yeah. a big reasoning of why I'm doing all this is again, yeah. it's like, I, I want, ev- I want everyone to, to be able to enjoy the fruits of my labor and not saying I'm like, you know, I'm like, let me show you, I'm going to help all of you. Right. But it's just more like, that's the purpose. Like, well, what's the point of building yeah. large wealth? If you are just going to buy a fancy car for yourself, like, yeah. what the fuck, I think that's the, the commonality that Derek and I share too. Like, we do this for our family. Yeah. We're not doing it just for us. It's like, it goes beyond our wife and kids. It goes to our siblings. Cause like him and I both have, you know, a commonality of like our brothers going through a hardship, mm-hmm. like yeah, my brother, his brother, and we don't really talk about it on social media, which is great. Cause then we do things for our family that we don't talk about too. Mm-hmm. So much respect, man. That's, that's amazing. Cause we definitely understand like 
where you're coming yeah. from with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate the fact that you, you share so much of your life on social media and that you don't have to actually show these little, well, it's yeah, a, it's a double edged sword that. because yeah, a lot of times it could be viewed the wrong way. Right? Well, well yeah, it's, it's like, you know, when I'm so transparent with everything, people think then if you don't show something, right. then you're hiding it. Mm-hmm. You're trying people not and to find out you show about it. it you're, yeah. you're, you're showing off and things like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, you're just doing this for social media content yeah, to give views everybody. and shit. Yeah, no, totally. Understand. There's always going to be those people, you know, that's the, that's the shitty part about social media, right? Is like the, <laughs> yeah. the yeah. negativity. Well, it's, I mean, I mean always luckily has. for me, I don't get as much, uh, much flack for that as like, you know, even when I would, you know, you know, I donate to charities and I would like, when I would show these donation amounts, mm-hmm. you know, you would get the occasional people that are like, why, why can't you just donate without, without doing it? Yeah. I'm like, well, if you don't show it, then people are like, do you ever donate? Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm, I luckily have, I have a really good community of people, but it's more like, guys, I show everything mm-hmm. in my life. Why would I not show the good things that I'm doing? Like, yeah. like, why am I going to show myself eating Chipotle every day? But you think when I like, donate to an animal shelter i don't want to like let you know about that too like what yeah, well, yeah, like, yeah. well, like you're just like, doing it for tax right off yeah ex- <laughs> exactly bro oh the, the, that that shit blows my mind that, yeah, like, that's like the it, that excuse you know <laughs> yeah so i guess that transitions into the third leg of business mm-hmm. we can lead with that which is why is charity work and business so important to you I mean, it's the same kind of thing that stems back to uh, my family. It's like, what's the point if you can't kind of give back? Um, I I don't think that – I think uh, you don't feel like if people start companies that they immediately have to like start, you know, giving away money to charity. I think you do it when you can, but you need to to make sure that your your business can survive and have a business and you don't want to like donate all your money away and you can't afford to like grow your business. So it's like when you're at a comfortable place and if you need to adjust and pause a little bit, you know, you don't have to try to prove yourself that you're a good person. You don't have to try to like convince yeah. people that like you're good or if I donate the certain amount of money, I'm better than if I donated a little bit less, you know? Um, or if you need to pause because, Hey, my business isn't as do- isn't doing as well as it was. And I kind of need to pause on the donations. You know, it's like, I, so there's a lot of like depth to it, but I think giving back is just so important. Um, but definitely don't get caught up in like letting other people decide mm-hmm. how you should be a good person with what yeah. you're doing. Well, you, you started ever forward with the whole intention of that being one of the, the main goals, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about Mad Max off-road customs. <laughs> how that. the fuck did just you switch. find that? <laughs> well was that your no. first business <laughs> I, what was your first I, business yeah i want you to know that y'all are the first people on this planet <laughs> that have ever that has ever come out of someone else's <laughs> mouth besides like me telling someone about it i i don't know how you found that you've done our due diligence my friend <laughs> be some old jeep form or something my yeah, brother that's a little bit about bodybutton.com uh <laughs> mad max off-road customs and actually i i can i don't know if i'd be able to find these old ass like logos i had created uh, that was actually probably one of the earliest uh, entrepreneurial journeys that I went on. So when I was super into off-roading, mm-hmm. um, I had a buddy, Josh, who helped l- taught me how to fabricate. Uh, so when I wanted to do these things with my Jeep, I wanted to take it to the nth degree and, mm-hmm. you know, put new axles and build tube roll cages and shit. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I didn't know how to do any of that shit. So my friend, he, I found people who did. And then I would like almost essentially be like an apprentice, but he's my buddy. But like we would just do stuff and I'd be like really interested in like, learning how to do these things so he taught me how to like weld and bend tube and so you know i i if you're like max hang that dry erase board on the wall i'd be like absolutely not but if you're like max i need you to like uh chop out the axle from my jeep wrangler and put in like coilovers i'm like oh yeah i can do that no problem um so i'm just really good at like like a specific thing i remember i remember when you got got that white jeep you put the fucking big ass tires i just remember you and they're like literally taking the axle off and like oh yeah i mean if people see my i mean i have like (laughs) like, i I mean i have like a top one percent jeep wrangler build like yeah without even exaggerating and like me and buddies did that like it wasn't i didn't i I paid for a shop to change the engine but like because i don't do electrical but um, so I learned how to fabricate, learned how to bend tube and uh, was really into that. So I could just work on my own Jeep and weld shit on to my car. Yeah. And um, so because of that, I would like start, you know, tinkering around with, uh, you know, bent, like making little tube doors so I could take my, the doors off my mm-hmm. Grand Cherokee back then. And I was as much as I document, you know, everything I do on YouTube, I did the exact same thing on Jeep forums back in the day with photos of what I was doing to my Jeep. So if I was... Mm-hmm. I mean, if I was adding a bracket onto my car, 
it wouldn't just be like added a bracket. Here's a photo. It'd be like, all right, guys, here's the bracket before I do it. Now, uh, now I've I've cleaned it up. Here's a photo of that. All right, here's where here's a photo of where where I'm gonna place it. Or right, the next photo is uh is me like a welding photo. I mean, I, I documented everything. Yeah. I have these like 150 page build threads with photos you could find today that you I could show you everything I ever did to my Jeep. Like I could show you from day one to the end like and again it's cool to be able to go back and see that right and yeah. so you were so you were doing social media before even the video yeah and, on and, and you're on forums and i was and i wasn't just a guy who posted i wanted to be like a known guy on the yeah, forum i wanted, wanted to be like to be that's that's max like well, let me ask max how to do this yeah or, yeah. yeah a little bit and um <laughs> so i would start making things and eventually people were like hey can you make those for my jeep and i'm like well you know they're like and I'm, i live in north carolina or something i'm like oh well yeah, I guess I could just like make them on my Jeep and then take them off and then like mail them to you. And I so I started, I was like, oh, I'll make things for other people. And I started a little bit and I'd have people like bring their cars and I made like like a roof rack. I made some tube doors. I made Damn. some like sliders, which are essentially like steps for people to get in, but they're not. Holy crap. Yeah. But um, Damn. yeah, like I can make all that. I can do it today. Like I can, I can make anything out of metal I can make. Like I can make a, I can make a table. I can make anything out of metal like but it's got to be metal it can't be wood yeah. do, we need, um, uh, do we need metal furniture yeah yeah, yeah. but like, I, I, can, like, I, I can weld i can fabricate <laughs> i can bend tube um and uh so the mad max customs was like oh, i'm gonna create a business yeah. and yeah sell stuff but was like, it an actual you formed it you formed the LLC. No. i was just like oh <laughs> this, I, I, yeah. I, this is my name and yeah. um yeah. and i started doing it but then i found my passion wasn't in creating stuff for other people it was just creating stuff for me yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I like doing customized projects. I didn't like making, so I started making like multiple sets, of these tube doors, everyone mm-hmm. wanted these tube doors, but I was like, I like when someone brings me a car is like make a custom tube door for my car, mm-hmm. not like make these generic tube doors in mass production and send them out. So, so it was a very like, short lived thing, yeah. but that was like my first experience of, I want something from you. I will be willing to like, what do you, what do you want to charge? I would make up a price that I was just like pulled out of yeah. my ass. That was, I'll probably, I would spend way more time making these things than I was getting Under paid charge, for. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. like yeah. way more. You're like, oh, it's too expensive. No yeah. one's going to buy it. Oh, it would take me like yeah. two days, to, like, th- <laughs> like, like a three days to make these. And I'd be like making like 150 bucks. Yeah. 200 bucks profit or something <laughs> like <laughs> nothing. Like, yeah, it was just crazy. But that was my first experience with like, and when was that? Like 2013, right? 2012. Oh, he- no, this is, shit i was high school yeah this is probably like 2007 mm-hmm. 2008 wow, wow. yeah I was, I was still living with my mom so it was it had to been like 2007 yeah. 2008 i was probably 18 i was probably like 17 18 so that's your first officially unofficial business do you have any businesses that were not successful or did not launch I invested sixty thousand dollars into a CBD water company. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think I remember at, that at the peak. At the oh, peak. I definitely remember. Yeah. I remember. I don't know if it was you. No, Christian came to me and yeah. asked if I wanted to oh, invest in that. You were dumb if you didn't get into it, dude. <laughs> it was with. Uh, was it with Katie also? <laughs> yep. Yeah. It was with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my sixty thousand and and I okay. I lost fifty thousand dollars on that. I got a check back for like nine thousand dollars. Damn. I was the smallest investor of what it. Happened? So a lot it of just people not take off uh how do i word this without getting myself in trouble yeah. um it did not flourish and there were yeah. other interests by the main mm. main creators of it that there were other businesses that were making a whole lot more money so the focus shifted mm. is probably okay. what happened but okay, what but also yeah, the, I know the, C- the cbd wave kind of like was yeah. there and, and it was at the time it was like it's, it's gone makes sense it's like gone, it, yeah. of course everywhere like cbd was everywhere yeah and it was kind of like a, almost like a crypto thing but you're still, like still i don't see a lot of cbd water well correct you know, but, and yeah. it's it's one of those things that like it was super popular mm-hmm. it it seemed like this could be the next big thing who knows and we i was like i'm willing to yeah put in i almost I mean, put a hundred thousand dollars in i didn't i think it was like cured nutrition try to do something like that and then it went to like delta eight or something like that something like that whatever yeah, yeah well I, yeah so i i tried that and and failed and i mean i mean if you want if we can do you consider that a business venture though or just that was like, like an investment, investment? I, still yeah. a business venture yeah. i mean the only business venture i've i i haven't I'd like to say I've been successful with everything I've tried because like <laughs> I've only tried a couple things, right? Like yeah, I, yeah. I I try things, I get into things that I know I'm going to do well at because that's like my passion is right. it, right? Yeah. So it's like, how yeah. can I fail? Like mm-hmm. I, I know I, I'm like, I'm living and breathing the thing that I'm like promoting, mm-hmm. not just like trying to start a business to start a business. And, you know, you know, Ever Forward was a business that uh, 
You know, it's been many, many years since I've had that. And, you know, it saw continual growth year over year over year. But, uh, you know, I never saw the success like a lot of people are seeing now with clothing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It was also different times. Yeah. But even then, you know, I was putting my heart and soul into that brand. And, you know, I, I use the the reference of like, you know, at our peak in 2019, our peak best year ever in revenue after, you know, building it for five years, putting my day in, day out effort, Sour Strips does like two, three X that per month. Mm. And it's just like, wow. Yeah. So it's like, I'm like, maybe I sucked at selling clothing, yeah. you know? So th that's a business that uh, I wouldn't say was a failure, is a failure, but it's mm -hmm. definitely something that uh, I've realized is a, uh, I think it's not a hard, calling. it's a hard business. It is it's a hard yeah. business. Clothing too. is definitely like, I'm so super passionate about, but it's a business that is, I always tell people like, if you are not 110% like mm -hmm. committed to do it, do not do it. Oh yeah. Because it's no. so ever changing and you have to be relevant in terms of like the fashion side, unless you're just releasing t-shirts, like nothing yeah. else, but just t-shirts. That's why I, you know, I, I just talked about this on a, uh, on a, um, a Q and a that I did about people because people are always asking, you know, is like ever Ford coming back? Cause it's always been like, it's back and then it goes away and it's back and it goes away. And it's always has this like great return. And I, I say my, the conundrum I get into my head is that like nowadays everyone wants to like, you know, why does everyone wear, Young LA and Naka Alphalete. It's mm -hmm. not because, I mean, yes, everyone's putting out very high quality clothing. Like we'll just mm -hmm. take that. You know, now the expectation is that it's all going to be high mm -hmm. quality. Yeah. But the reason is people want to be in these cliques, these communities, these a yep. part of something. They they want to they want to be mm -hmm. in these. They want to represent the brand because of what it means, right? Um, and I, for the longest time, I was like, I need that forever for it. I need that forever for it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out what it was. And I'm like, okay, we're going to go, you know, all these things. And I've come to the realization, I'm like, you know, maybe I don't need to have like a culture around my clothing and I can just be like, I'm going to simplify it moving forward. And it's going to be like, Hey, you know, you make nice clothes. Yeah. You want to buy it? You want to yeah, buy it? You, wanna, you, you need make a nice, nice shirt when you go out? And, and, I, got, I got you. If you want to support me yeah, as well, that's yeah. cool too. But like, you know, you're not going to be a, you know, a, a part of this circle if you're in it, yeah. but you're going to have a nice piece of clothing. And um, I, I, think I think what that, sets yours apart though, is that you donate most of your profits to charity. So well, I, I, I don't yeah. donate most of my profits or, to charity. I, I, I donate, I do donate to charity. Donate to it. Yeah. yeah okay, and yeah. that was like, <laughs> I mean, well, whatever. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. Get you. I think that that is a very valid way of putting things because mm -hmm. you have clothing Businesses like Built Basics, Cuts Clothing, ASRV mm -hmm. that don't necessarily have a culture, but they do really well because you have an expectation of what you're going to get. You know what you're going to get every single time. You're not – there's not a million influencers pushing it. You're not supporting the specific influence. Yeah, I, I think I, that's a good way to put I it. I guess like yeah. clothing is just tricky because like – you would get frustrated a lot. Um, you know, obviously I'm surrounded – even years ago as you know, all these – you know, you see the numbers that like Alpha Lee would do and, mm -hmm. and stuff. And, you know, I, I'd get in my head a lot about um, the clothing because I'd be like, okay, like I have a launch and I, let's say my videos at the time, let's say at my peak, I was like, you know, getting like 120K views, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And I'd, I'd, I'd do a launch and I'd have like, you know, a thousand orders or something, yeah. right? And I'd be like, you know, I'm super appreciative of the thousand people. But in my head, I was more thinking of not like, why isn't more people buying my shit? But it was more like, how do 120,000 people see a video of me telling you how great this thing is, whatever, and like only 1% yeah. is like converting, <laughs> yeah. you know? I'm like, why don't I have that conversion mm. of my own brand? Yeah. Like, why? Um, and so that was always like a really frustrating, like just confusing thing. Do you, feel I was like like, it, do you feel like it's because you've kind of shared the same audience in a sense? Yeah, with, abso with absolutely. Everybody you were around? Yeah, yeah. and it's, it is again that, that culture. Yeah. I mean, I'd have we'd go to expos and you'd have, uh, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of people lining up and th every single person would come up and tell, tell me how much they love my content, mm -hmm. love my videos. They would stand in for hours, want to get a photo with me, but maybe th three of them were wearing ever forward. Everyone yeah. was wearing awfully. Yeah. And I'm like, why yeah. not? Because I'm like, fuck you Christian, but it's yeah. more like he's created this community around yeah. it. And I never, mm -hmm. I never could do that. And that was like, what yeah. was, People were buying Ever Forward because they wanted just to support me. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, I was like, God, how the fuck do I create this community, right? Yeah. And because I got so frustrated with it, that's probably why I never created a community. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've gotten a lot better with that and understanding kind of where it is. And mm -hmm. with business, I mean, sometimes the writing is on the wall. I think a lot of people, you know, it's 
it's interesting when I hear a lot of these like really successful entrepreneurs, like I have seven businesses that I run. I'm like, what's that? How do you do that? Because I have like two, and one of them are is fucking crushing it, and I like can barely put focus in the second yeah. one. How do you have seven? Mm-hmm. And um, it's like you can't put a hundred percent into every single thing. And you know, right. for me, I just need to be more realistic about where ever forward is and where it can go and mm-hmm. what it what it represents. And uh, don't let like. Ever forward, it will never be a sour strips. Right. It'll never do the numbers that it will. I'm just, it's not like, well, if you put your mind to it, no, it won't. Like, it won't. Yeah. <laughs> like, when you, so when you, when you first started sour strips, like transitioning into that business, um, the level it's at right now, did you ever foresee that or is that something you aspired? Cause I know originally it was just you wanted to be the, I guess, change the way people bought candy and mainly go online, right? So, yeah, well, my, my, my goal was to have people go online and, and we had a, a ton of success mm-hmm. for the first like two years, like online, did some crazy numbers because of, you know, COVID and just yeah. good timing, mm-hmm. you know, great product, great execution, mm-hmm. great branding. People yeah. liked me. It was a success, right? You know, um, great hype and promo. And, and then COVID happened, coincidental timing. Everyone was yeah. home buying a bunch of shit. Um, and then right when COVID ended was when we started going to stores and it was like yeah. this perfect transition, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, no, see, I wanted to be like the online candy, but now I understand if someone would try to just start that, like, yeah, you're going to have some success out of the gate, maybe the first year or two, but it's going to slow down drastically because mm-hmm. Sour Strips is in fact one of, if not the fastest growing candy brands, period. Yeah. Uh, at least from an influencer, yeah, for sure. And I know in our online sales plateaued. I mean, they're great, yeah, but they're plateaued for the past like year and a half. Yeah. And like nothing I do fluctuates because people want to buy in stores. So it's like people want to buy candy in stores. And I definitely did not. You know, you always hope your business is going to grow, grow, grow. You know, do crazy numbers. But like for for how much we've grown in, we're about to hit our four year anniversary um, of how much it's grown and how much I was worried about going into a certain size warehouse and, Mm -hmm. you know, thinking I wasn't going to use all the space to now outgrowing that and doing all this. So it's, it's, it's been a wild ride. Yeah. Crazy. When you, uh, so the reason is one of the reasons you started Sour Chips because of that, um, or because of ever forward, just kind of being stagnant in that space you're in where you kind of like, Oh, I need to start something else or look into something else. No. Cause like, like I said, Sour uh, ever forward was like just, Every year ever forward was just like a very gradual growth. Yeah. Like it was never like a mm-hmm. spike of like insane. Um, but we would have like a pretty like, mm-hmm. you know, substantial growth. Uh, nothing compared to what these fucking people are doing now. But uh, <laughs> I think I think Alphalete it was an anomaly. Man. Yeah. Like, it was a an fucking anomaly. anomaly. Like it's yeah. But uh, it so it, it wasn't like I was like, oh, I need to I need to uh, diversify in other right. businesses because yeah. like this because it, you know, it, if I never started Sour Strips, I think ever forward would have continued to keep growing but like at a very consistent pace and we'd be doing really good numbers but again nowhere near what we're doing with sour strips um that was just like a i got a lot of inspiration from christian because when he started up at the time 3d um it was like first of all it made sense i was like oh Mm -hmm. he essentially popularized white monster like in the the fitness space like Mm -hmm. that's where i got trying the energy drinks because like oh this guy i watch on youtube drinks these all the time loves them i'm yeah. at the store oh there it is oh shit it is pretty good oh, i'm gonna start drinking it i was influenced yep. and um okay. so when he when he launched 3d we we'll say 3d um i was like oh damn like a product like outside of the the norm right Who the fuck, energy drinks for the fuck um but it kind of made sense and i was kind of thinking i was like i kind of want to do something like that i was like what's my product and then i I don't know. I can't, I wish I had like documented, see what I had documented, um, kind of my mindset of like, here's why I want to start this type yeah. of thing. But it was like, I think, you know, when people came to expos, if you go back and watch any of these videos where I'm at expos, look in the background behind me against the wall and you'll see mounds of sour candy from yeah. people bringing to me. So I was like the candy guy. So it just kind of made sense. And at the time, cause Christian has business partners with, with 3d. And so at the time I was like, well, if Christian, the fucking, you know, a superstar needs business partners for this type of product, then I definitely need business partners for sure as well. Cause I don't know what the, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so I actually had some business partners initially trying to start this brand. Cause I was like, I'll just be the face of it. Just like Christian, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And then they'll handle all the back end. They'll figure out manufacturing, all that jazz. And then it kind of fizzled out. We hit a lot of roadblocks of, you know, 
we talked to so many different like manufacturers and got samples and all these things. And, you know, a lot of times we just weren't being taken seriously because, you know, most of these candy companies are making candy for right. know, other people. And you're like, Hey, I want like a pallet. They're like, yeah. no, like you need to order, you know, yeah. a truckload. And I'm like, I don't need that. Yeah. Um, so we hit a lot of roadblocks and then, and then that was right when I was like about to move to Texas so I just kind of, we just kind of, it's kind of fizzled out. And then I moved here to Texas and then I was like, I think I can do this. And I set out on my own again mm-hmm. and just did a whole bunch of Googling and, uh, you know, re restarted the idea and launched it by myself. And so, it, yeah, it was never out of like necessity because I before would have kept growing if right. I didn't start Sour Strips. It was more just, this could be cool. Yeah. This could be cool. And then I had no what idea. Is, what is something I love that I can essentially create myself? Yeah. It just, yeah. it just makes sense because I can talk your ear off about, it's candy. I can tell you, it's like, I know, I know it. Like I made a, I created a brand that was designed for people who were like me, who were obsessed with the candy. So it's like, I, I knew what candy enthusiasts wanted. Yeah. I'm one of them. Yeah. So it was almost like uh like I could speak for the people cause I know what the people want. Cause I'm one, I'm like, I'm the person. With I'm the, the people. Voice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but no, like you, you could never predict how fast something's going to grow. And I'm yeah. still like shocked. And again, it was, a lot of dumb luck, a lot of good timing, but I mean, I I feel like I feel like it was like, you know, yesterday that we were in your office like sampling some all the flavors that I mean, because you originally launched what like three flavors or yeah or three three to start, and then you had all the other samples of like watermelon, mango, yeah. Office, and, and I, honestly, remember, I remember like us like tasting those. Wait till you see in the next. I, I I can't dive in so much on the podcast, but like let's have this conversation again in like mm-hmm. one year from now and. Everything is going to be every everything that like you new, see new about products on the rise. Everything is yeah. just going to be elevated to another level that like people are going to be like, what the fuck? Like so, that, and that's going to that's where like the next phase of this company is. But um, it's kind of like you have a passion, and now it's yeah. like I, I I love it. And what I learned is because I'm so hands on in the company because I don't mm-hmm. have partners. Like I have some great employees, great team members yeah. that have you know been crucial parts that like they didn't come from experience. We're all just kind of learning how to build yeah. this business you know, day by day. But, um, I've learned that I love being hands-on in the operations in the day to day. Like, I don't want to be, I'm going to go make content. Someone else run this business. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah. Like I tell people like every, every single store that carries Cyrus, every single distributor, every single retailer that has reached out to Cyrus strips. Cause they've all, we haven't, we don't have a sales team. We don't have people mm-hmm. like reaching out to stores. Um, every single store that has wanted to carry sour strips and has been approved has that email when they send it to, to through the portal comes straight to me. I am, I am the one that's, mm-hmm. I am the first chain of command that, yeah. that, that decides yes or no handles negotiation, does all the first conversation because mm-hmm. I, lo- I, I enjoy it. Do you like see I, yourself eventually kind of fading away from that position as the company grows? Passing the baton. No, <laughs> I really, I really don't yeah. because like my social media right now is very much focused around me and what I do. Yeah. I have zero intention of changing my content to make what's trendy and stuff. I have zero desire to do that. Yeah. Um, and I, so it's like, I'm going to make con- the content that's easy for me to make that, you know, f- documents my life. Mm-hmm. And if you want to watch it, you can watch it. If you want to keep watching this journey, but if you want something like revolutionary every episode, but if you want to see me build my relationship with my girlfriend, build my, my life and build this business, then like, I'll take you along on the journey but I really like being hands-on. I'm actually, yeah. so we're consolidating. We have like three warehouses and we're consolidating into one bigger one because mm-hmm. we're growing, and which is crazy to think that we need, we're getting a 60 plus thousand square foot warehouse. And you're going to outgrow that in a year. I hope so, bro. <laughs> and uh, what's, I'm so looking forward to being all under one roof because yeah. I even told Nick who handles all the operations. So I was like, bro, be prepared to see me like every day in this mm-hmm. warehouse. Like yeah, I just yeah. hands on, like I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. And I, and I know every aspect about the business, man. I mean, yeah. I, I, there's videos of me loading, you know, on a Saturday, loading up my car, the trunk with a bunch of candy, driving to HEB, going through the the delivery door in the back, inputting in the system, taking a cart, driving, putting it down in the aisle, stocking the shelves, going back, mm-hmm. signing out. Like I did that shit. Yeah. You know, like I, I've, I've done everything in that business. Mm-hmm. You know, now the day to day, like, yeah, I don't, if you were like, hey, how do we ship a pallet to California the easiest way? I let Nick handle that. But like, mm-hmm. I love just knowing a lot about my business. Yeah, yeah. Like if you you ask me anything about sour strips, hey, why is the why is the box this size? Hey, this packaging, like why is the why is this this way? I could tell you. 
I could tell you in an instant. Why is there a hidden penis in your product packaging? There's, there's not. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, so, we, so we were going to ask you why you didn't have business partners with Sal Strips. So yeah, you, you answered answer that, that yeah. which, is, which is great. Well, you, me, so so but, but on, on that, the thing is like, I, I thought that I needed it. Yeah. yeah. And because of just someone, because it's like, oh, I don't know this space. Mm -hmm. And hopefully what I've shown people is that like, you don't have to know everything to, to do it. You just have to start. And mm -hmm. with Sour Strips, and again, it's like, are there a lot of people with other businesses that have like given me their input and their their opinion on things? Yes. And how's that changed the way I've done business? Probably. Yes. I've like done that. But as far as like just understanding how to do things, I didn't even know. Like I was like, wait, barcodes mm -hmm. to scan in a system. Where do you get barcodes from? Like you have, uh, do, yeah, you have like, to pay for them. You gotta, yeah. yeah, you got to pay for them. And I'm like, they what? need to be GS1? Yeah. Like, what is that? And then, you know, when people are like, oh, like, what's your, like, master case of, like, how many, like, how are you going to ship the product to the store? And it's yeah. like, what price do you sell it at? Oh, I want to carry it at my store. Or, like, you're a distributor. Or, like, how much do you sell to me? And I'll sell to stores. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I'll just make some shit up. Yeah. What's the every, price point? Yeah. Bro, every day, I'm making up rules in my business yeah. every day. Like, every sometimes I'll be, like, a new distributor. I'm like... Yeah. New rule, opening order has to be $15,000. Yeah. I pulled yeah. out of my ass, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just... It's just new standards. We, yeah. We um, talk about that, I think, all, on the all the time. previous podcast, yeah. we say, like, no matter how big a company is, they're always figuring shit out. Yeah, with like, Kayla, right? Yeah. Still figuring it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So... A lot of people are. Would you, and or have you, had an investor try to invest in this hour strips, or would you ever take one? Uh, I, I get... I'll, I don't get as much anymore, but definitely in the early phases, I got a lot of emails from people like, I work at this investment firm, I work mm. at this capital, blah, 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 um, uh, who like presented it and I would like entertain just like I read the emails and stuff. But uh, yes, I've gotten a lot of approaches for people just being like, do you need capital? Um, but I, I have, this is a completely self-funded business. Um, I start, excuse me. I started it with $50,000 and there was one point, I always say I never put my money in, but there was one point when we were launching into a whole bunch of things that the cash got so low that I had to put like a temporary like 20K just to cover something. I got down to like nothing. So I put 20K in and then I like paid myself back in like, like a week or two. It was like, it was, I was like a float, like a tiny float. Yeah. So other than that, I've, I've never had to inject more of my personal cash into, I would have if I needed to. Um, I was really fortunate to have done other things and other businesses that if I needed, yeah, if I needed like a couple million dollars or like a million, I, I would need some help. But if it's like, yeah. if the company needed like an extra hundred K, 200 K, like I could, I could float that myself Yeah. Um, from these other businesses, but I know everyone's not in that scenario, but I wanted to treat sour strips like it was the only business I had. Right. Yeah. Um, so no, I've never taken any other investors and I, I don't need them at the moment. Um, for us more capital isn't the bottleneck for us uh it's a lot of manufacturing constraints and just mm -hmm. uh the supply and demand honestly yeah. um, problem to have yeah and 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 luckily there's like i mentioned with the you know having to inject a little bit of cash there's definitely been times when you know my employees didn't even know that like i, I was i was like i spent all the money like i spent all the money <laughs> yeah how like, not gonna, like on my shit, but like yeah it's like yeah. you know i was doing every that's why i wore so many hats i was doing it mm -hmm. because i was like I want to run this as lean as possible. Yeah. Like I want to do it and I don't want to in, in the CPG world, it's actually a flex to be like how much money you've raised and stuff, but I don't mm -hmm. want to go down that path. So, yeah. um, at the moment I, at the moment I, we, we, we have enough capital to s support anything we want to do in the business. Nice. Um, which nice. is, is, is That's a, a flex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, and so we can do some big moves without having to stress, which is another thing is, you know, I, I'm not like min maxing my my finances as much as I should, but I don't have like a financial like CPA or a, like a CFO or like a financial controller or mm -hmm. like someone that's helping me plan budgets. Because as dumb as it may sound when I say it out loud, of like we have enough capital that I don't need to really get into the weeds of the analytics to know if we can afford it or not. Because I'm just like, do we need it? Yes. Okay, do it. Like I don't have to like okay, well, if we do this, like that's this amount of budget, whatever. I'm just like, we just have the cash to go, 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 go. Like whatever yeah. we need to do, um, which is a very yeah. fortunate yeah. position we're at. But um, sure. will that be in the future? I don't know. And, yeah. you know, the, yeah. So yeah. Do, you have do, you a, ever, do you have an exit strategy? So I was going to ask. The number one question I get yeah. asked with Sour Strips is, uh, would you ever sell the company? And I think that's, what's, what's interesting, it's, it's interesting because I net, which I guess because it's a candy company, 
But I was like, no one ever asked me that was mm-hmm. ever forward, ever in a million years. Yeah. They would just be like, do you want to sell it in retail stores? <laughs> um, both candy, I get asked that every time um, of yeah. something. And it's like, I never knew how to answer it. I was mm-hmm. like, what? Um, I guess the way I've, I've answered it before is like, I, I don't wake up every day checking my email going like, damn it, no like big no buyer, no yeah. conglomerate wanted yeah. to like offer me a big check. Um, Cause at the moment, so when it, when you raise capital and you raise a bunch of money, you have to have an exit because mm-hmm. not only you have to pay your investors back, but like you're going to get so diluted over time. Mm-hmm. A lot of these big brands that you see that have raised 50, a hundred, a couple hundred million dollars, they have to have a mm-hmm. billion dollar exit or they're screwed. Like you have to have an exit. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're bleeding money. You're not profitable. So honestly, the fact that Sour Strips is doing the numbers that it's doing and we are profitable month mm-hmm. over month and are growing like 100% a year is an anomaly. Yeah. Like mind-blowing in the mm-hmm. CPG space I'm in. So, and and that's with me just fucking not knowing what I'm doing every day, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, just doing, you know, getting really lucky yeah. with rolling the dice. Um, so it's like, I don't, at the moment, it's like almost like unless some stupid offer, mm-hmm. like why would I sell it for even like a right. good chunk of money if I know that the path, like I'm going to get there myself. Yeah. Like, um, but what I'll say is I would be absolutely open to a, to like a larger company being like, look, we love what you're doing. We're kind of pissed off that you're uh, taking our customers because, you know, the data's there. Like p- mm-hmm. people are buying your shit like over ours or something. Right. And, um, and the runway to significant growth is there. It's just more distribution. It's lowering your cost and getting to more stores, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, if another company was like, look, let's take 50% or 49% or 51 I don't know what the number is. They're like, let's take a chunk of your company. We're going to give you a whole bunch of money as just a, ch- a chunk of cash for you. We're going to then be able to take manufacturing in- in-house, lower the cost of goods by 50%. And immediately inject it into our distribution channels and get it into a hundred thousand stores in the next twelve months. Would you be open to and we'll and we need to keep you on because you have yeah. the vision of what you want to do? I'd be like, absolutely. Yeah. Because if you know, my goal is to get this candy everywhere and to let everyone enjoy it and you know, and be one of those candy brands that, you know, people grew up on. People mm-hmm. grew up on sour strips and shit. Yeah. And um and I that's with like the satisfaction because it, it's like we have money. Mm-hmm. I have money. Like I don't need the money. And what am I going to do with more money? Like, you know, yeah. I'm, and at the moment I'm run. I'm still in this kind of sprinting mode. I don't have kids or whatever. Like I'm, I'm in, I like being in the weeds. Yeah. Um, so I, I would absolutely sell a large chunk of it if it meant that I could, you know, cause I feel like it's almost doing a disservice to the people. If yeah. I, it's like, could I get there myself in 10 years or with a company? Could I get there in two? Yeah. I think I should take it with it with the two. So but yeah, like, not necessarily exit, but have somebody come in and help you propel it to where you yeah, want. Yeah, I, I just don't think like, I don't know. I, I don't wake up every day hoping that I have an email yeah. from an exit. It, I'd be lying to you if I said if I got some email and they had some really large offer. Sometimes you got to be like, take the money. Like, yeah. because it's like, will it always be there? Is this an mm-hmm. upward trend? I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah, how long can we sustain this path? You know? Yeah, and, and at the yeah. moment, like the runway for sour strips mm-hmm. is very apparent. Like yeah. it's, I, I see the path. It's it's not a flash in the pan. It's mm-hmm. a, uh, you know, it's yeah. When I when we launch into a store and I tell my audience to go to a store and sell it out, it generally works and everyone's super happy. But can you do that six months in, twelve months in, mm-hmm. a year in? And the fact that like we are. You know, we sell over a hundred thousand units a week in Target alone, and 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 we're like number one and num- and number two, we're number one, two, and three, and then number five with our flavors of like beating everyone in the category, month over month, week week over week, month over month for the past like year and a half. Oh, they know who you are. Crazy. So it's like it's like I know this is a yeah. this is a real brand. This yeah. is and, and so it's like if I just get it in more stores. It's going to expand. If I get yeah. it in even more stores, it's going to expand. If I get it in even more stores, and as I expand, my cost of goods are going to go down a little right. bit. I can, you know, economies mm-hmm. of scale. And so it's like the runway's there for me, and I'm not strapped for cash where I yeah. am being backed into a corner that it's like I either choose to expand or choose to go under. Um, so who knows what the future holds? Yeah, if someone gave me a path. ridiculous offer, I might be like, you know, whatever, but it, mm-hmm. it, it, it'd be something that'd be like, I still want to stay on for a little bit. I want my team to stay on. Yeah. I want that. I want the people who have been with me since day one. Yeah. They're going to be taken care of. Like, so it's, uh, 
Yeah. So it's, it's, so, it's, so you don't want to just retire and play Diablo all day then? Look, if someone out there is like, Max, dude, here's, you know, $100 million and, you know, you can sail off into the sunset. You know, the argument's always like... Back to Twitch. Like, yeah, if you sold, dude, uh, like, you know, like, th they're going to take it and, like, grow it even more. And, then, like, now it's even... It's worth even more. But, like, well, no shit. That's the purpose of, like, yeah. of, of course they're going to make it yeah. more valuable after you sell it. Like, it's right. going to be worth more. Yeah. Um. So I, I don't know, honestly. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't know. Because, like, at the moment, I'm financially stable enough to yeah. do whatever I want. The so, decision wouldn't be financially based. It's it, It'd all be like the the details of what, what the structure... The, yeah, and it'd be my desire like. of like... Yeah, yeah I mean, do I want to keep doing what I'm doing right now every mm -hmm. day for the rest of my life? No. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of being so, ha so you yeah. know, in the office every day, because especially when I start a family, like I want to yeah. be like, you know, I, I put in the work and it, it seems weird to say like, oh, I can just kind of chill now, yeah. but like... People it, are working so they can chill eventually. Yeah. yeah. And even even though it does it doesn't feel like it, we are still young in yeah. a sense. Like we're still very young in, in, in what we're doing. So you still have a lot of time to build build your business should you choose. It's actually I, it's actually really uh funny you you talk about like this investor thing. Like Derek and I see the path of like what we're building here and we've had some eyes on us that have been in our favor to be mm -hmm. able to help us scale this business, like investors coming in and seeing like what we're doing because we have the track record, what we've been doing in the past eight months. People are coming in, they're saying like, you have the, you guys have the data, you have the know-how to grow this business. We're in the same boat. Like we're like, okay, if we have someone that can, not from the financial perspective only, but come in and like help us grow to a certain level at a higher rate, and quicker pace is that more beneficial as long as we stay in our company as the overwhelming majority yeah. mm -hmm. maintain the vision take care of our people like it's sometimes that is more beneficial right like yeah we're, yeah, we're in like yeah. the flip scenario like we do have this yeah. option in front of us and we're trying to decide yeah. what the the best path best path it's is, it's so one of those things that like you you won't know the best answer yeah. because it's you know is it uh when you take investors now you're you know, it's, you essentially have to report yeah. to someone else because you, they know, need to yeah. make their thing. So yeah. it adds a level of stress, um, right. to you. But it's like, I think sometimes it's like, if you know in your gut that like the decision is the mm -hmm. best, I think you'll, you'll kind of yeah. know. Yeah. And you know, it's like, you don't want to also, again, kind of do a disservice, uh, by, you know, growing so slowly, but you just mm -hmm. don't want to, you definitely don't want to grow yourself out of business. Yeah. And a lot of people yeah. try There's two different routes, especially, I mean, mm -hmm. this probably applies to, uh, you know, any business, but you know, there's two different kind of strategies. Do you like, you grow as fast as possible at any cost and it, because you're just going for top line number or do you mm -hmm. try to try to grow a very profitable business? Mm -hmm. And sometimes a, a, a large pill, some people need to swallow is that I've heard from other people that like, I make sense is not every business needs to be a hundred million dollar business. Not every business yeah. Yeah. even needs to be a $10 yeah. million dollar business or exitable. Yeah, Someone exactly. Can you can have, a, a a, a, I think, uh, yeah. like Aaron Marino kind of, uh, alpha M he was the one who kind of told me is like, it's like a lifestyle company where it's like, yeah. it's very, it's very profitable. It's, it slowly grows. Mm -hmm. It doesn't add a like, crazy amounts of stress or complexity to my life. It makes great money. Mm -hmm. But it's like it'll never be a hundred million dollar company, and that's yeah. okay. I think yeah, everyone yeah. thinks that like if you're like you know back in the day, bro, when I hit a million dollars with Ever Ford, I was like, oh my god, yeah. like what, right? Yeah. But now people feel bad if they're not doing a million like a month, and yeah. I'm like, wh I'm like, wh how what? is wh <laughs> what has changed? That's an insane yeah. number. Basically, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Basically, the difference between a distributions business versus an acquirable business is what yeah. you're saying too. Yeah. It's like, do I do this as a lifestyle where it funds me? I'm very comfortable. I can make great money. There's a lot of money in the bank. Yeah. I can grow if I want to. Or do I have an exit strategy in place in you know, five, 10 years to mm -hmm. sell it for a hundred million or whatever? I, I think yeah. when you have an exit strategy though, it's like if you don't, if it's not on the timeline that you think or it doesn't go the exact way, you're going to feel down about yourself. Whereas right. like, so it's like, for me, if I set day one was like, I'm going to sell sour strips by mm -hmm. year five. And it's like, if I get halfway through year four and it starts stressing me out that I haven't like got any acquisitions, I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm like, I'm, I don't really care because I'm not like, I'm not like drowning in water that like I need this life raft of, you know, an acquisition yeah. for me to, you know, be, be happy. I'm like, like validate. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. we're crushing it. We're yeah. adding, 
We're about to add thousands of new stores before the end of the year. We're yeah. profitable. Yeah. It's like people like it. Yeah. I'm I'm Gucci, man. Like, I'm yeah. not going to slow down. We're going to keep growing. But, like, there, I have – if we're doing the numbers we're doing in this amount of time, can you imagine what we're going to be doing in the next four years? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what? We, we were yeah. saying it, too, and, like, I think the first time – I had sour strips was at his house. And then we both like were like, this will probably be a billion dollar company in the next five years. <laughs> it's it's that it, was it's, like a, it's just one of those paid. like left field kind of things. Yeah. It was like it, it's, it's like a billion dollar business. Mm-hmm. Like that's nothing to sneeze at, you know? Like to say this 10 figure thing, it's like pretty astounding. I mean, we know a couple billionaires. Yeah. We do, you know, in the social media space, you know, like they're our age. Sour strips is, crazy, is just one know? of those yeah. companies that like it, it shouldn't. It's like on and in the, in the idea of it, it shouldn't work as well as it has. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's like who, who would right have timing. known? Who would have? Yeah, not only the like perfect timing, execution, all that jazz, but like, who would have thought that the absolute? And this is like true. Is like weird. Is like who would have thought that launching a not a candy alternative business, not like a healthy candy pre workout, whatever, but like who would have thought launching a candy business in the fitness industry? would have been the best possible <laughs> industry you could have ever done. Because now the way I look at it is not, I mean, not only are we, I mean, we just went into like corporate gold's gym. Can you like younger <laughs> Max, who the fuck would have yeah. thought that corporate gold's gym yeah. would want it? We're in like crunch fitnesses. We're in mm-hmm. like oh. all these supplement stores. Right. And, um, we're selling in gyms and it's like, but my mindset, I'm like, if you can convince the, the, the fitness culture, to accept this into their like daily life, then I think the external people are like, well, if these fit people who are really about like, mm-hmm. cause the no, average person has like what we think is easy to like lose weight, gain weight, gain muscle, gain strength. They're like, Oh yeah, yeah it's like, it's just science. Like it's yeah. Easy. Yeah, right. Yeah. Most people think it's like the most complicated thing yeah. ever. And they're stressing You're about eating candy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I'm like, if, if they can look at fitness people and they're like, Oh, they're incorporating it in their life and they're not miserable. Then like I can incorporate it in my life as well. Yeah. And I think, I think, I think being in the fitness industry was the best one. Really? To, yeah, f- for harder sure. harder you work, the luckier you get. Yeah. That's all it is. So we've been kind of talking yeah. about this, but the fourth yeah. leg is like retrospect and goals. So we've already been kind of kind of touching touching on that. Um, out, outside of that, what you just said, is there any like advice you would give anybody who is starting their own brand outside of it doesn't have to be a $100 million brand, you yeah. know, those those types of things. You, you're always figuring things out along the way. Like, yeah, you're I figuring mean, things I mean, out. Yeah, you gotta, You don't have to have the knowledge. Like, we've already touched on some of those. But, like, I guess what would what would you give I, us I, advice? I, I think it circles back to, like, you know, I don't know what I don't know. And you don't mm-hmm. need to know everything. You just got to get started. Because mm-hmm. hopefully, like, what I try to show people, like, I'm when you – it's. When someone who doesn't understand me and my humor watches my videos, they're probably like, this fucking annoying guy mm-hmm. is <laughs> saying all these dumb jokes to get attention, like whatever. And then they see the businesses and they're probably even more angry yeah. <laughs> of how successful like Sour Strips is because they hate my videos, right? But what I'm trying to show is like, you know, I don't come off as this like suave business expert right. at all. Yeah. But I think I've done very well for myself. And I think what I'm hoping that that shows people is you can be a very normal guy. You don't have to be a like guru who went to 17 masterminds before you can get started. Yeah. Like I've shown you exactly what I've done for the past 10 years and what I've what I've accomplished with it. Yeah, I think people get caught up in the I have to learn every single thing about this or like paralysis by these, analysis. I have dude. to do these these masterminds like you said to learn how to do this and it's like uh, most of it is just doing it and figuring out what works if, yeah. you, if you think about it like our generation of like the people who started with social media in like 2016 2015 era none of those people did masterminds i know well that's none of them. that's what everyone always says uh i've never they're like like never. what do you like what b- books you know all, all the different things mastermind whatever and i was like to be honest Every successful person that's in my circle has no one that they've no one's yeah. they have they don't have a mentor. I've never read a fucking out. book. Yeah, they just they just <laughs> do it. N- none of none of my successful friends have, have asked people how to start their businesses. Because yeah. my thing is even that's why I would get so triggered when people would be like, dude, I, I'm thinking about starting like a, a clothing company. Like, dude, like like where do I where how do I get clothes made? I'm like, I'm like, bro, or girl, the like the business is literally solving problems. And I was yeah. like, and if you want to get into a business, let alone clothing, and you can't even f- get past the first fucking yep. problem of f- 
figuring out how you start a business, maybe maybe you like should think about this more. Like it's like don't start a business. Yeah, I'm like I'm like you can't Google like, and it's because people think that like if they Google, they don't find something in the first day or two yeah. that people are gatekeeping. I'm like, look at look at sour strips, man. Mm-hmm. I I went in for months with two really successful business entrepreneurs. We couldn't figure it out. I took a six month hiatus and then I got back on the horse and tried to figure it out. And for months still hit roadblocks. And I just, and I was like, I've searched every variation of what I'm trying to find out. I've gone through every page of Google, right? People just think if the first search they do and it's not on page one of Google, it doesn't exist. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty yeah. true. You, you yeah, don't go to the second or third O or whatever the yeah, fuck it is. No, that's yeah. pretty true though. <laughs> yeah, so last so question, oh. which is essentially our slogan for the business of relay distribution is we have what it takes. Has anyone ever told you you do not have what it takes? Doesn't have to be that exact phrase, but in a sense, right? Uh, the only time that I can remember, I, I remember it, that, that triggered like a memory. Um, I was in a, I was in a, uh, a bar like many, many years ago, like back in college. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I first got my internship at a, uh, out of left field, I like, I got, I got the job over like the finance degree people. And it was just so wild, but I got a job at this place called Scott trade, who was a stock brokerage, uh, mm-hmm. firm, yeah, I've heard I of guess Scott trade, yeah. they got bought by like TD Ameritrade. I think that it, I mean, it was wild back in the day and people would be like, I want to buy Apple. They would call in like these yeah, older yeah. guys, call in, be like, I want to buy five shares of Apple. Be like, all right, hold on. It would take them 20 minutes to like mm-hmm. buy a share. Now you can do it in two seconds on your phone. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I remember when I got this internship, right? And uh, I remember going to this bar and one of my friends, this girl, I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, I got this job at this like stock brokerage firm. I don't know if that's what you would call it. Um, and she's like, oh, oh shit. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I, I think I want to be like a like a stockbroker actually now mm. like I'm like that she's like you can't be a stockbroker I was like yeah. what do you mean it can't be a stockbroker she's like you like you're not going to be a stockbroker you ain't stock got it yeah you, you, you don't like got it. you you like that you got to be like really like kind of smart and like really into that and I was like it, it like I remember it to this day mm. of like I remember what she said to me when I said like oh I think this might be the path I'm going to go and she yeah. told me like oh no you can't do that mm-hmm. and I remember being like the fuck I can't like <laughs> so I remember what this girl said to me very specifically And, um, you know, I think with being on social media, I think I've like indirectly been told that I, I I think people have looked at me and looked at my content, look at how I carry myself with my humor and my lightheartedness and my, you know, that's what she said jokes. My, I lean into like the immaturity, you know, stuff. Um, and I don't put on this like very like proper business kind of like, you know, a a persona. And I think people put me in a box. And mm-hmm. I think people have put me in a box for a long, long time. Yeah. And, you know, they would compare me to other people that I'm surrounded by mm-hmm. um, based just on my content, just on the way that I act. And um, I think I've, I've loved proving people wrong, mm-hmm. even if they weren't like they wanted to see me fail. But it's like more of just like, I don't think anyone on this planet would have thought when I started Sour Strips that it would be like where it's at today. Mm-hmm. Even in me, even me, like yeah. <laughs> even me. So it's been yeah. cool. That's like the most satisfaction I get is just seeing what's achievable. And yeah. I think that with Sour Strips specifically, but with everything that I'm doing, like I don't think I've even, uh, you know, started to to break break through of what's actually possible with like how big this brand can get. Because uh, like I again, there's come back in a year, a lot's going to be changed, and there's just so much expansion and growth that we're, we're going to have. Um, and I'm just like, I can't even believe it half the time. Yeah. Cause I'm like, me? Yeah. yeah. Me? <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. Well, uh, yeah, that pretty much, that brings us across the finish line. How long um, is this? Well, this is a, a big it? pot. A little, a little long. Yeah. We'll, we'll maybe we'll chop he's it like, up. He's like, he's uh, like, 45 great. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. Brings us across the finish line. Uh, and you know, you're actually the first client of ours that we've had on this podcast, uh, which funny enough, you were actually our very first client with, Really distribution. So. I'm like the shittiest. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> like, yeah, we just charge him a storage free, and it doesn't actually. Sell, he sells one item a day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, we, back into it, we appreciate you coming on the podcast, uh, helping us, uh, just you know, let people get to know you, uh, providing some business insight and passing the the baton of knowledge, so to speak. Uh, Thank you so much, man. Everyone, it was yeah. a pleasure. I'll always hold cool. you guys' baton. Yeah. <laughs> Two hands. <laughs>